It all happens right here. The playoffs start. Let's take a look at tonight's starting grid brought to you by T-Mobile. Up front, Joey Logano. He won the poll. Well, he won from the poll here earlier in May. The 32-year-old from Middletown, Connecticut starts up front with Kyle Busch in the fifth position from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's his 15th playoff appearance. Danny Hamlin, so much success here. <laughs> no surprise, starting right next to Ross Chastain. A lot of history between those two over the course of uh, this year, Martin Truex Jr. disappointed. He's not in the playoffs, but a fast car. He'll be at row nine. Unexpectedly deeper in the field than we thought Chase Elliott there in the 23rd starting position. The 26-year-old from Dawsonville, Georgia, struggled in qualifying. You see back Ty Dillon at row 15. You mentioned struggled in qualifying. How about all the way back? Row 18, the 99 of Daniel Suarez didn't even get a chance to qualify. He'll actually have to make a pass through after the green flag after failing inspection. Cars rolling around the racetrack. Jeff, can we dial up Tyler Reddick starting in that fourth position? Hey, Tyler, it's Burton. You got us? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Well, we spent the last hour talking about all the challenges of this racetrack. What do you find the most difficult part to be? Well, it honestly might be uh, myself, the driver. You got to stay. Uh, very disciplined over 500 laps here. I think the biggest challenge is uh, making sure you keep yourself in the game and stay focused for that long of a race. Well, you finished second in May, so you figured something out. But how do you take oh. that finish in second and then move forward into the playoffs right now tonight? Well, there's a lot of good things for sure. But uh, it's the playoffs, the Southern 500. It's, uh, it's a different atmosphere than what we were here in the spring. So. Obviously, feel really good about uh, how spring went and where our car is. We uh, we made some good adjustments overnight to Orlando with Chevy, and honestly, just more than anything, I'm just uh, excited to get this thing going and see what we got and get to the get to the task at hand. Five for 500 miles at one of the toughest tracks we got. Well, we're excited to watch you always put on a show. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the enjoy the race, and we'll try and make it interesting as long as we can. Well, we know he will. We want to thank Northern Tool and Equipment for letting us ride along. Tyler's going to give us a show all night. And there are going to be plenty of storylines that we'll follow. Is this the first race of the playoffs? Let's start with Kim Kuhn. Well, Ross Chastain, you see him there in that one Chevy. He admitted to me he's both nervous and excited about his first Cup Series playoff appearance. He has five finishes of 15th or worse in six Darlington Cup starts. So he ran yesterday's Xfinity Series race for some extra preparation and seat time here. He said he doesn't ever feel like he really knows enough about this racetrack, and that's why he wanted to run both the Cup and Xfinity races to build that notebook as best he can. And he told me despite how different the two cars are to him, it was a huge benefit and will help him navigate through this race, Dave. Kim, Denny Hamlin is his 16th playoffs. My, how time flies. He's still looking for his first championship. Is this the year? Well, it starts again at Darlington, and we'll be able to watch him on the Toyota onboard all night long. He's got four wins here. That's the good news. The bad news, it's 500 miles, and he is banged up. Still a little bit sore from that crash at Daytona last week. Took off the Xfinity race last night. We'll see how Denny does in the 11, starting 11th. Parker? Well, Dave, for his teammate, the two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, Kyle Busch, making his 15th playoff appearance you may think this may be one of his toughest playoffs ever because he still has not announced where he'll be racing next year maybe that's a distraction but after spending the last hour with him I would say the opposite he was relaxed cracking jokes and was consistently confident in this race team in the speed of these 18 cars and his ability here at Darlington he'll roll off fifth and I think he could be dangerous in these playoffs Marty as the drivers come down pit road to get their pit road speed checked right here, Chase Elliott starts an uncharacteristic 23rd today. When I talked to Alan Gustafson this morning about why that might be, he pointed me back to May, the early race here at Darlington. They wrecked early on in that practice session, missed the whole session, missed qualifying, and they had to go to a backup car. Alan told me missing that practice might have been a bigger factor than we all thought came here. We we're a little bit off on short run speed, but he also said, Hey, listen, it's a 500 mile race. It's a Southern 500. We have plenty of time and plenty of pit stops to get it figured out tonight. Don't worry about Chase Elliott. I think he'll be contending for the win before too long. 
Yeah, Chase Elliott said in Countdown to Green that he feels like, and this race feels like, the longest race of the year. All right, Steve, break us down. Tell us the numbers on this one. Well, it feels like it because on the, on the watch, it does. It rivals the 600, so it's 367 laps, 500 miles. The first stage and second stage, both 115 laps in length. The final stage a little bit longer. That fuel window, you can basically just circle you know, forget about fuel. Fuel has nothing to do with Darlington. It's all tires. We're going to have a competition yellow at lap 25 due to some rain earlier in the day. And then I expect to see at least another pit stop in stage one, probably two in stage two if it goes green, maybe even up to three in the final stage. Those tires will wear out so fast. Field starting to bunch back up two by two behind the Coca-Cola pace car cam. That's a great vantage point that we'll be able to look back at. For example, Joey Logano choosing that high line to get ready to start this race. All right, drivers, so it's the first race of the playoffs. If you're one of the 16 drivers, are there more nerves in this race and the start of this race than normal races? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, you just you don't want to have a failure or any kind of problem this first race. Even the guys that have a bit of a cushion in points, you just don't want to have any kind of problem. Race number one in the playoffs. Steve, we've been there before. Going to the playoffs, feeling great, got a lot of momentum. You have an engine issue or any kind of mistake that puts you out of this thing. You are not climbing out of that hole. You're going to be one of the guys that gets eliminated. Nobody wants that to happen tonight. That's for sure. But you also know you have to attack this track for 367 laps. This is a grind. you got to do everything perfect. This is the most difficult racetrack on the circuit and the pressure of the playoffs. Can't not wait to see who can step up. And we know the field is going to breathe a sigh of relief because they're being led by one of the best ever. Yes, Don Staley, Hall of Fame player and coach, the three-time Olympic gold medalist with Team USA and current coach for the South Carolina Gamecocks. She is taking care of the pace car duties right here for the start of the Southern 500. Two by two, Steve, already, are you thinking as a crew chief, all right, am I looking at the radar for the weather? Am I thinking about when I come for my first pit stop? Oh, yeah, at this point, you've kind of laid out the plan. You've talked to your driver. That competition yellow takes a little pressure off. We know we just have a little 25 lap run here. Settle in, figure out your car. We got all night, Rick. <laughs> Stick with me, give me good feedback when you make good adjustments. In front of a sellout crowd here at Darlington Raceway, the Southern 500 is underway. Fireworks around the racetrack on that first lap, and they're still side by side for the lead. The 20 of Christopher Bell trying to take it away from Joey Logano, riding right up against the wall. Bottom of the screen, Daniel Suarez, as mentioned, passed through penalty due to inspection issues. Look at this battle. Who is Byron going to push? The 22 of Logano, and the eight dives below the 24. Tell you what's happening right now, guys. We talk about the tire fall off and how hard it is on this racetrack. Christopher Bell being pinned down on the bottom of the track, putting a ton of pressure on his tires. I think he recognized that. Kind of gave that spot up getting, in, getting into turn one. Suarez blending back out on the racetrack, but he is now being scored a lap down. Now he have to try to work to keep this track position. If the field starts to lap anyone, as we get a little bit, you know, closer to that competition yellow, uh, he's going to down here to see heads up. He's going to want to be able to try to stay in this position for that comp yellow or any kind of rain, any kind of caution. Riding along with a McDonald's on board, and again, it's Bubba Wallace that's behind the wheel of the 45 2311 will be racing for a, a owners championship with the 45 team. You saw Bubba Wallace right there, he downshifted, getting into three. He's running the bottom. It's very hard to make this pass off of turn two. He gets very tight, easy to collide into each other. Austin Cedric, J. 
just in front of Bubba Wallace. Austin in that white number two. Cedric right now in the sixth position. So it's Logano, Bell, Byron, Reddick, Kyle Bush in fifth. Cedric and Bubba Wallace as we see the 47 now. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. moving toward the front and the cautions come out for rain. You can see it on the screen. What a break for Daniel Suarez to be able to get this caution. Basically fixing all of the issues and you know, being a lap down, having to come down pit road. Still lost all that track position, guys, but this is a big deal. Absolutely. He'll be the free pass as the only car lap down. Hard to believe we're seeing rain again. I mean, on the radar, it is just a little speck of a shower. Yeah, the sun's shining look at down that. on the I racetrack. Mean, and like you said, just a, a little blip on the, the radar screen. Yeah, that wouldn't slow down a, a Little League game, but at 175 miles an hour into the corner, NASCAR's forced to throw a yellow. Saw rain has affected a lot of races. It, you know, saw that big accident at Daytona. So using caution, making sure we have the safety of everybody in mind. But yeah, I can't believe it's like the lotto for uh, Daniel Suarez. Another car I was noticing, the nine of Chase Elliott, it, it, was, it was well documented. He didn't qualify very well. I thought it was no big deal. They would make some adjustments, but in seven laps, he's already lost positions, losing five spots at the back of the field. Very surprising um, out of a forder, former champion. Yeah, you'd assume that in the back of the field, even if he had a poor handling car, he'd be able to maintain, to be losing spots in 25th, 26th, 27th position. That's that's a, they got a long way to go get the balance of this car right. A lot of you Chase Elliott fans are looking at that car going, wait a second, that's not the normal paint scheme that I've seen. Well, designed to drive. It's an art collaboration with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta and young Danny Gamel of Sharpsburg, Georgia, drew this as a therapy dog themed design and young Danny just 16 years old and they're wanting to raise awareness they've already raised and donated over a quarter of a million dollars to children's health care in Atlanta and what a great paint scheme there for Chase Elliott you're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Darlington the telecast presented by T-Mobile The NFL season kicks off Thursday night on NBC and Peacock as the Bills will visit the Super Bowl champion Rams. Then on Sunday night football, the Cowboys play host to Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Under a quick shower caution for a little bit of rain here in the area. My Kevin hair Harvey. blower keeps blowing hot air for some reason. Oh no, that's not good. Report from Kevin Harvick. Hump Brothers Pizza Cam. This is a long race. You do not want that helmet blower. Unless it's blowing cold air, that is not going to work well for him. Ryan Blaney has also got a cam with us tonight. Ford Performance Cam. Joe Logano has got the Coca-Cola camera. Sitting out there in front of the field, see a little, few little specks of rain hitting this camera lens. But you can see the sky above us, so you know beautiful weather. But a little tiny shower popped right up on top of us. A little temperature in the racetrack should keep this track pretty dry. Pit road open this time, so you can choose to pit. But this is not the competition yellow, and because of that, you cannot add fuel to the race car. Be interested to see if the nine comes down pit road. We had documented that they lost some spots. Uh, maybe there's something they want to adjust on this car balance wise, or you know, maybe they're just going to be patient. See if the track comes to them. Uh, he stays on the racetrack, so some cars do choose to come to pit road, Marty. A couple cars taking the pit road opportunity here. Let's chat with Paul Wolf, his driver Joey Logano leading right now, one of the best at strategy on pit road. So, boy, this is going to be a crazy night, Paul. How would you divide up stage three? Some people think you can do it in two stops. Some people think three. What's the pervading uh, thought here on pit road? Well, I think some of it depends on how many of these early cautions we get, right? Managing uh, the sets of tires we have, how we can break it up throughout the uh, the rest of the night. Obviously, the comp yellow threw a, threw a little curve at us as well. Uh, obviously, no one pitted here at this one, so uh, it's just way too early to burn up those tires. Yeah, so let's talk about the comp yellow. How much does that change the game? Because that's going to take up another set of tires when you had very few to play with in the first place. Yeah, I think most of the guys probably would have split this stage up into two stops. So 
Um, it'll just make the runs a little bit longer, but uh, I don't think we'll end up using more tires unless we get another untimely caution. So let's talk about the advantage of pit stall one here. Winning the pole did that for you. Dale Jr. talked about it in the pre-race show. It's only 20 feet from here to the camera. How big of an advantage is this particular pit stall? Oh, it's huge. It's something we talked about uh, coming here this uh, this week with the pit crew. Uh, having this stall in the spring, how big it is. It's, uh, you know, just gains you uh, spots um, with, with equal stops to someone else, just not having to get up to speed to cross that line. So um, hopefully we'll keep the shell pens all forward up front all night and uh, get the strategy right. Tell you what, Steve, 20 feet from the end of the pit stall to the camera, I mean, that might gain them, what, two, three spots throughout the evening? Well, yeah, the beauty is you only have to roll forward to the camera. That's where you're scored. That's the white line, the first white line in front of the 22's pit box. Now the yellow line past that, the big thick one, that's where pit road speed ends. So under green, no real advantage, but under yellow, drop the jack, roll forward, that's where you're scored. Uh, so, yes, Marty, a big, big advantage. And you heard... Paul, uh, Paul already talking about tires, tires, yeah. tires. Even with 12 sets, they don't want to use any extras up. <laughs> you mentioned how good that pit stall was earlier in May. Well, Joey Logano has not shied away from the fact that he says, I don't have any friends on the racetrack. When I come on a weekend, my friends are all watching the races. I'm not racing against them. Well, he moved William Byron out of the way to win here earlier this year. In his you know, in his mind, he was repaying something that William had done just a few laps before that when William tried to pass him or they raced off a of turn two. He felt like that William raced him a little rough. And so in his mind, he thought, hey, I'm going down here to repay the favor. Uh, but in a lot of other people's mind, he was just being Joey, you know, going in there and running in the back of somebody to pass for the win because we've seen him do that before, you know, Martin Tricks Jr. in Martinsville. He doesn't apologize for any of that. And I think if that, that's okay in my mind if he gets out and says look that's the way i'm gonna race super duper guy out of the car in the car you know he's he's rough and tough and he's a gladiator he's got that split personality that you really need <laughs> as an athlete right i mean you yeah. you're in the on the field you want to be an animal you want to be self-centered ugly mean that's what you want to be off off the field you want to be a good guy you want to be a guy that people want to hang out with do the right thing and that's what joey does i think he's the complete package he when he puts that helmet on he's not the guy that you just spoke to an hour before he's a completely different personality and we see a lot of that in the usa docuseries race for the championship out of joey logano off the racetrack but on the racetrack like you said out front here at darlington caution for the nascar cup series playoffs the cookout southern 500 earlier this weekend the nbc toyota on track car with jeff burton behind the wheel got to maybe relive some of the greatest moments that have taken place here at the track well here we are darlington this is in my opinion one of the most difficult racetracks in the world two guys that i grew up idolizing kill y'all burl David Pearson, both from South Carolina, they knew how to get her down this racetrack. The things that they did then, drivers still do today. The Darlington Stripe is a tradition. The problem is, when you're going fast and you're trying to maximize speed, you get up there and you get into the wall, that's a Darlington Stripe. What we don't know with this new car, how much can it take and how will that impact the race? I won a few races at this racetrack and one of my advantages was turn three. Getting in the corner, driving in deep, getting right against the wall on corner entry. They carry his speed to the center. I never had to turn the wheel as much by doing this, and my car would accept more of what I ask of it. I also lost a race at this racetrack. Randy LaJoy beat me in an Xfinity race. I drove in the corner too deep, and when I did, I go up the racetrack like this, and Randy LaJoy, he just hung a left on me, checked his entrance up, got back underneath me and he went on to win the race. One of the greatest races in NASCAR history, Kurt Busch, Ricky Craven. Kurt Busch ripping the top, Ricky Craven, he chose the bottom, just carrying so much speed. So they get right here and all the way down the front straight away, they crash to the start finish line. What an incredible finish by two Warriors. Yeah, such fun being on the racetrack. Uh, re reliving some of the history of, of this track. And I love this cam right here. We talked about the Darlington Stripe, and this is going to get a workout tonight because Tyler Reddick will pin that thing on the wall, be right up against it. And I don't know if this camera will make it through the whole night, but we're going to see some great shots. Something about that, that wall, the, the red and white, you know, oh, I think yeah. it makes it look even faster. Marty. 
What a cool shot from Northern Tool and Equipment. We've talked about Chase Elliott losing five spots on the start. Why? He explains on the radio. I'm not awful. I just made a bad decision there. Lost those spots, but a little tiny, a little lazy, but comfortable. Yeah, I copy that. So, Jeff, a bad decision. What could that have been on the start of the race for Chase Elliott? Yeah, just picked the wrong, wrong line, probably trying to be a little too conservative, knowing a competition caution is coming. Didn't want to get in a wreck, but one of the problems he's got now is several people, not many people pitted, but some people, but everybody that did is behind him. So he's got some cars that you would think would be slower than him once the race gets going, but those guys put on tires, so they might be getting him right now and him losing more spots. And Jeff, the race about to get back underway. They have pushed the competition caution back to lap 35, on or around lap 35. We get ready to restart here at Darlington. Once again, it's Logano and Christopher Bell making up that front row. in the wall there between the 20 and the 22. That was tight through there. Look at the rest of the field. Amazing how they can go through there side by side. William Byron's going to take the third spot away from the 18 of Kyle Busch. And then it's Tyler Reddick in the eight just behind him. See how this racetrack is when you drive into turn one. The momentum just shoots you up to the top of the racetrack. Now we're riding along with this incredible camera. Early in the run, you're going to see Tyler Reddick trying to run the bottom. Shortest way around the racetrack. Also looking for some clean air, but as the run goes on, you're probably going to see him get to the top. Three wide does not work here. They sort it out. Ross Chastain in the one just to the inside of Alex Bowman on the windshield at the very top of the windshield. The name's there will be in yellow if they are playoff drivers. So their windshield top banner in yellow, as well as the spoiler, a yellow band, a band across the spoiler for the playoff drivers. A lot of cars using that high line in 304. We saw that last night in the Xfinity race. A lot of momentum down this straightaway. You see them dive to the inside when they get those runs. A decision to make right here. What do you do? Do you enter? in this corner side by side or do you give a guy some slack it's very tight it looks it looks much easier than it really is very easy to hit each other and yeah, the driver on the outside usually didn't have a choice but to lift and allow the guy on the inside to have the entry to one but now there's a second groove into turn one where that guy on the outside can race and everybody knows that so it's kind of odd on how they get down to the corner who's going to lift first Shifting at Darlington as we ride along with Kevin Harvick and here his shift points. He's using a lot of apron there getting into turn one. They don't use much off of turn two now with this new patch of asphalt put down there. Create some bumps when they come onto that patch and back off of it in turn two. Talking to some drivers, they say the bottom, the apron in three and four, not quite as much grip as they're used to with the older car. See a lot of guys using the apron down there as well. He's had a good start to this race. That 34 car, Michael McDowell, he qualified well, had good speed, taking off a good decision right here. Eric Jones got underneath him, and instead of being side by side off of two, he just gave him the spot too early right now. You're not going to give that spot up later in the race. This is like, you know, we talk about drivers that just seem to match racetracks. This is Eric Jones's racetrack. He runs so good here. No matter what car he's driving, driving at number 43 today in the top 10. A reminder this is the one sport where when the playoffs start it's not just playoff eligible athletes and teams all 36 37 38 cars are out on the racetrack racing trying to get the best performance they can get for their team including the 43 of eric jones parker hey guys i spoke to his crew chief dave allens earlier today about what makes eric so good at places like this he said he's just so patient with the race car he's brave he's bold his decision making in terms of how he drives it but he's most importantly patient and that pays off so much at tracks like this where you have where the tires fall off the runs can be long and you just have to manage that car and he said that's really eric jones strength eric finished in the top 10 in both stages earlier this year got an accident late that took him out of a good finish 
So we watched the nine car Chase Elliott battling down the back straightaway on this 23. And again, it's Ty Gibbs that's behind the wheel of the 23. 2311 made a switch with Kurt Busch not being able to drive. They went to the 45 with Bubba Wallace, and that's what Ty Gibbs, who is substituting for Kurt Busch in the 23. Morning. Chase Elliott is still back in 23rd, Rick. When I did talk to Alan Gutson this morning, he said the one thing he was really worried about was their short run speed early in a run, and that's all we've had so far at Darlington. But he felt like long run speed, they would be good. Jeff, you had six wins here as it goes by Austin Dillon between Xfinity and Cup, so you know how key that long run speed at Darlington can be. Oh, it's so important. And I think tell you, somebody that's struggling with that long run speed right now, we just saw Chase Elliott Go by Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon's losing, losing another spot to Harrison Burton. So early in the race, Austin Dillon's going the wrong way. Dillon, the last one into the playoffs with his big win a week ago at Daytona. Look how slow he is in the middle of the corner. Seven car coming up on him. Trying to take a posi position away. LaJoy hadn't come to pit road. I believe he got tires. So Austin's begging for that competition yellow to come out. Just a few more laps for that three car to be able to come to pit road, make some adjustments. We, we're gonna continue to talk all night about, you know, long run speed and tire fall off. It's more than just what setup is in your race car. It's also what the guy's doing behind the, wall, the wheel. We see Denny Hamlin reach over downshift. If you attack these tires when they're brand new, you can take speed out of them right away. You almost need to kind of ease into the run. Now you have to do that while racing. You can't give up spots. It's a little bit of an, uh, you know, like an artist approach, Dave. You kind of kind of figure out, feel it, not slip those tires, not lose any grip. And the guy you're riding on board with is one of the best at it, Denny Hamlin with four wins here. He'll take that spot away from Austin Sindrick, but he'll do it gingerly, Steve, to your point. You've got to know where not to rough up the tires when you make those passes. He was very patient with Sindrick, told his crew chief early on, the car is great, I'm just chilling. Denny has moved from 11th to 7th now. And Steve, knowing that you've got a caution coming up in about five laps, why would you be ginger with your tires now? Shouldn't you be aggressive? Well, you can now, uh, but you, for the first, even a 20 lap run here is gonna feel like a long run. So if you slide those tires, the next lap, you're gonna slow down a 10th or two more than everyone around you. So aggressive, yes, or stop conserving, yes, but this is not a track at any point you wanna slide the tires. Just wide, like, here comes yeah. Martin Truex Jr. looking at the inside of Ryan Blaney. And by the way, it was Blaney who knocked Truex out of the playoffs based upon points. Three points separated the two, and Blaney got in. We always talk about how difficult it is for drivers to race against other drivers that aren't in the playoffs. You got a guy like Martin Truex Jr. He's finished second in points for the last five years. He feels like a champion. It's going to be interesting watching him navigate through these playoffs by not being in it. He's not going to be easy with those guys. He's going to be pushing for races, Marty. Minus 12 spots for Austin Dillon, about to lose another one to his brother Ty right behind him. What's going on? Listen on the radio. Hey, hey, hey Ryan, like dog That's good, because we'll fix it. Not very happy, extremely tight. So, Steve, sometimes you'll do that with your race car, right? You want to set it up tight because they build loose. It gets so free as the run goes on here at Darlington as those tires wear out. Maybe a little too tight at the beginning of the run. By the way, his brother Ty right behind him does have fresh tires, so he should go by him before the comp caution. Right. It builds free. I also feel like the track swings free as the sun sets. As the track cools, I've always found that the cars free up. So while it seems bleak right now for the three car, Long race. We can't say this enough. Long, long race. Just stay in the lead lap, keep working on it. For some reason, this whole weekend, the, the track's been free. All the Xfinity drivers complaining about being loose. Uh, last night in the Xfinity race, all the cup guys, all their laps, talking about their cars being loose. Just been a handful for everybody, Parker. And another playoff driver who's really struggling right now is Chase Briscoe in his first playoff appearance in that 14 car, falling all the way back the 32nd after starting 19 just early in this race. He, too, fighting a very tight condition. He told me when he arrived yesterday for practice, he said it felt different. It felt more intense. It felt like it mattered. And then we had one of our worst practices yet this season, and they've just not been able to get the handle on that 14 car, really struggling. He's looking forward to that competition caution coming out. And I think that's something tough for this team, Steve, for the crew chief, Johnny Klausmeyer, to keep him in the game. That young driver, first playoff appearance, really struggling early on. Well, we talk about what is, you know, experience and playoff experience you can feel it this weekend when you walk through the garage it's the same guys that were there last week 
but it felt a little different. You could tell that the playoffs were here. Those young drivers, you have to get that experience. I mean, you look at Kyle Busch, a two-time champ. He knows, he had that kind of that feeling and that look walk, walking around the uh, convention center in Charlotte for media day. He just seemed like he was excited for the playoffs to be here. That's that experience paying off. Putting pressure on William Byron right here. Trying different lines, trying to keep some clean air on that car. Look at him go lower through the corner, trying to be able to drive deeper with some downforce on that front end, running lower through the middle of one and two. Again, trying to keep that car in clean air. He's been doing the same thing down here in three and four, way down on the apron with his 18 car, going wherever the 24 is not. Kyle Busch had a very fast car yesterday in practice. Maybe the best one of the best cars for sure. Drives right up beside him, but that 24 has the momentum off the turn, down the front straightaway, pulling away. Those two fighting for the third spot. Byron has it right now. Kyle Busch is trying to take it away as we're anticipating the competition caution any moment now. There it is. Yellow's out. It's hard to believe as we see Kyle Busch that we are all the way to the playoffs without contract news. Yeah. I mean, you know, earlier this summer we heard about, well, him and Gibbs are working back and forth. I think I just assume, you know, some negotiations. They're going to get it figured out. But then, you know, a lot of whispers that it's just the door has shut at Gibbs. I don't know if that's true or untrue. But what I do know for a fact is we're now in September. We have, after today, less than 10 races left in this season and a two-time champ. 60 career wins doesn't know for what organization he'll be driving for next year just it's mind-blowing to think and i think it is weighing on kyle bush yeah. to your point to your point steve we've been coming to these racetracks feeling like that something is imminent an announcement is imminent and then just and, and then it gets pulled away pulled off the table the the talks fall apart it's been blowing our minds that this guy isn't got a contract yet for next year. He said it's coming soon. He said the announcement's <laughs> coming soon. It's got to. He's mentioned also yeah. that there are multiple offers that he is weighing right now. So, again, waiting on that news. Don't know exactly when it's going to come, but obviously we will be here to let you know what that decision is. NASCAR Drive, that's your live race day companion. You get access to high-definition in-car cameras and the current position tracker, pit stop data. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive, or you can download the NASCAR mobile app. Field on their way down pit road now, Dave. Rick, once the race resumed, Denny Hamlin picked up five spots in the 11 car. Says the car is building just a little bit tight right now. He'll get an adjustment for that. Sunoco fuel and good your tires, Kim. Tyler Reddick was loose yesterday in practice today, saying he was a one and a half tight. You see him there at the top in the eight car. Crew chief Randall Burnett said he may be over just They'll go back a little bit. Air pressure, four tires, Sunoco Fuel, Parker. And Kim Christopher Bell hits out the second position there in the center of your screen. He'll be four Goodyear tires and Sunoco Fuel for him, and he was very happy in the car and said, I wouldn't make any changes for a longer run than that, Marty. Joey Logano has led every lap to this point. He said, I just started to lose the rears at the end of that run. Bobbles a little bit, leaving his stall, but I think he held on to the lead here. He said, I think it will come to me as the sun goes down, but I need help for now. Byron and Bell swip, swap positions. Byron with a good pit stop gets off of pit road just in front of Christopher Bell. NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance, only paying for what you need. Toyota, let's go places. And by Northern Tool and Equipment, Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. Tradition here at Darlington Raceway, and we're staying with tradition. Stage two will have an Earnhardt, a Jarrett, and a Petty that will take over the broadcasting call. So that will be Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dale Jarrett, and Kyle Petty will take over in stage two. Dave. Rick, Kevin Harvick will start near the back of the field because of a pit road miscue, one of the first for the playoff drivers. The left front had trouble being taken off. In fact, it was so long that the jack was dropped early without the left front being put back on. Take a look at Kevin's onboard here. They come around having trouble getting that left front off, and before they even get a chance to put the left front back on, Kevin is told to go. They had to come back and do it. No penalty, though. That's the good news. Yeah, that, that, that pit crew right there has been on fire since they made a change. Uh, a couple months ago, Steve, but first pit stop of the playoffs did not go well. No, and, and you know, good thing that you, the teams are getting a little bit better about stopping their driver. We have seen guys get off pit road, 
have the wheels come off. That's where the crew chiefs start to get suspended. So they're getting a little bit more familiar with these issues. Right before the competition caution, we saw Byron and Kyle Busch fighting for position. Well, Kyle Busch, not a good stop. They will restart ninth. The field approaching the Geico restart zone. Great push from 20 car right here into the back of that 22 Logano down in turn one. Logano is going to have clearance into one, do whatever he wants. Now the battles for second with Byron. Christopher Bell. Byron's going to take the spot away. So Byron up to second now. Bell will drop back to third. And there you see Tyler Reddick peeking out in the eight, trying to take a look at maybe taking that third spot away. Okay. And it looked like kind of a block on Christopher Bell there on the eight. Getting down into three. Wasn't sure if that was just a shallow entry, but Reddick had to check up. Now he's slipping back there to Bubba Wallace and Denny Hamlin, who are almost side by side here. Denny underneath the 45. Bubba having a great run early on here. Bubba's going to stay next to Denny Hamlin. Did not concede that spot. Yeah, Saw the car bottom out just a little bit through that bump. Yeah, there's new pavement in turn two. And the drivers talk about it being very bumpy and uncomfortable getting onto that patch and back off of it on the corner exit. Bubba's fighting good on the outside here, though. All right, so drivers, we talk about long run. Take me behind the wheel, right? If I'm coaching you, we know there is 73 laps to go in this stage. We're going to run probably 30 or 35, come down pit road and get fresh tires again. How hard are you running? How much is left in the tank? Are you just being patient in line? You try to pick up spots. That's what I want to know, Steve. Are we going to split this stage in half? If we're going to do that, 35 laps, I'm going to run hard. There's no need for me to save tires if we're only going to go 35 laps. If you can tell me I got to go 50, 60, then I'm going to have to start saving tires. But at 35, I think I can go ahead and roll. All the drivers have to be very cognizant of slipping the tire early. If you beat the tire up in the first five laps, that costs you 10 laps, 20 laps at the end of the run. To your point, if you're going to do a long run, you don't want to lose spots on a green flag, but you want to maintain but not push the car in those first five laps. Save that car a little bit in those first five laps for it to last a long time. Well, let's take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap. Lap 42, Joey Logano at 29.33. He wasn't reading those notes. He's out there pushing, stretching that gap, stretching that lead. Dale, to your point, you know what that tells me? There's no way Joey Logano expects to run 70 on this set of tires. He knows in about 25 more laps, he's going to be turning left, coming down pit road, getting four fresh Goodyear tires. Chastain battling here on the inside of Blaney down into turn three. Dives down into the bottom of the corner on the apron. Slides up a little bit, a little bit of a slide job. Oh. Blaney not happy about that. Sticks it in there, complains with a bump to the back bumper of that one car. But that shows you what Tyler Rett, that shows you what Ross Chastain, his approach to these playoffs is going to be. I think he's been confused lately. He's been fast early in regular season, but he's been involved in a lot of incidences. The drivers have been mad at him. That move right there says, you know what? I'm putting that behind me. I'm going to drive the way I want to drive. I'm going to drive the way Ross Chastain does. That's aggressive and not care about anybody but myself. And we'll see how aggressive he gets if he's able to get up with Hamlin, who's right now in the sixth position, because those two definitely have bad blood between them as we see the three moving around the outside. And we'll see if Austin Dillon has his woes fixed after that first run that he did not like the car at all. And now he's trying to take the spot away from the four of Harvick. Yeah, he did take a spot away, but this is back in 30th and 31st position. Neither one of these guys want to be this far back in the field. This is where Kevin Harvick is so good, though. He's a grinder. I mean, he really is. You think about his entire career, early he had trouble managing his emotions, but as he got more mature, he became and is, in my opinion, the very best at race management, even at a time where his cars haven't been that fast, he finds a way to get finishes where other people won't. So this is not too big of a task for him. Let's see if Austin Dillon's got that car tuned up a little bit. I don't know what the y'all have given me. Man, we'll keep working on it. Yes, sir. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> I mean, goodness gracious. Uh, he's, he's, pretty dis he's a little disappointed in that car, and I'm sure those guys are going to continue to work on it. But tough night so far, Marty, for this three. Can I answer your question, Junior? No, no, he does not have the car where he would like it. But the, talking to Austin Dillon this week, the one thing he pointed out to me was, listen, we are grinders. I love long races. In fact, Steve, he told you this week in an interview you did, I wish races were 800 miles. That's where we are at our strength, where tires fall off, where the races are long. Don't count them out quite yet, but they are struggling here in stage one for Austin Dillon. Well, they're struggling, but remember, 
You know, seven days ago, he was not in the playoffs. All these other teams are the majority. They knew this was the playoff race. You start putting a little bit more effort, a little bit more emphasis of engineering on what you're going to bring to Darlington. The three car had to bring it all to Daytona to get in. And we'll see, Marty, if that uh, theory of long races suits him. He's going to have to stay on the lead lap, though, for it to work. We just saw Ross Chastain had gotten by Kyle Larson. And back to the three and that communication between driver and crew chief, earlier in the year, RCR said, and Richard Childress specifically said, you know, timing was really bad on the announcement of Tyler Reddick. Well, what about the timing of Justin Alexander saying, I won't be back with this team next year? He made it right before the playoffs. Well, he made it publicly right before the playoffs, but I believe internally they've known for some time. Justin has just said the grueling schedule is too much as a Cup Series crew chief. He still hopes to stay at RCR or maybe move to another race team in a lesser role, but. Uh, he's making a commitment back to his family. He says it's just too much time to be gone and, and too much pressure to operate one of these race teams. I'm sure he's getting a lot of phone calls, though, to try to reconsider that uh, and, and stick around in the sport in some capacity. But look at this five car here, um, kind of slipping back to the field, and this is very reminiscent of the way this race went for this car earlier. Started second earlier this year and finished 13th in stage one, ended up having an engine failure. Now, Ross Chastain, on the other hand, did not qualify well. We saw a lot of speed in this car in practice. He's driving through the front, already caught this 43 car, Eric Jones. He was second in stage one first. He won the stage, uh, stage two in the, in the race earlier this year. Very fast race car. Got to see this one car continue to drive through the field. May be a factor in the, in the win later. Larson's going the wrong way. Chastain's going the right way. All of the field continues to follow Logano. NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on USA. It's telecast presented by T-Mobile. And what a beautiful shot of this mile and a third racetrack. And the grandstands completely full. And you see the campers and the cars all the way around this facility. Aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. Watching the battle for the lead. It's pretty much stabilized at about a second. Nine tenths between these two cars. William Byron was a little bit quicker. Then Logano closing in. William led 24 laps here earlier this year with a fast race car in position to win before Joey put the bumper to him. You can see it right there on the screen. Eight and a half tenths. Every lap, every two laps, he's faster than Joey will match him. Keep him pretty honest. Joey might be sitting right out front there pretty comfortably, just running about 90%. This 24 is pushing hard, guys. I want to get a few updates from Pit Road. We'll start with Kim. And you see Ross Chastain there. He is broken into the top 10, slowly marching forward. And if he continues that, he'll find himself around the likes of Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin, two drivers he's had on track incidents this year with. So I asked his crew chief, Phil Surgeon, this morning, are they afraid of any sort of retaliation during the playoffs? And Phil said, no, we really feel like it's more chatter than anything else. Ross echoed that sentiment, saying these 
rivalries are just noise to him that he's actually able to completely shut out once they go green. Ross currently, Dave, runs in that ninth position. Kyle Larson runs in 12th. Before the pit stops, he said, my car is definitely tight. I can't turn down the track with speed. I really need that. Since then, restarted sixth, back to 12th. So he's losing spots. He just radioed in. No front grip, no rear grip. Still work to do for this team. Parker, Marty. Dave, never fear, Chase Elliott fans. He restarted 19th a moment ago, up to 15th. Car still a little bit tight, but slowly making their way forward and showing they do have, indeed, some speed in this nine car. A couple of adjustments coming up, and also pit stops coming up for all of these guys. They'll take on fresh Goodyears, as we've talked about, Parker. Right, and running last of the playoffs contenders is Chase Briscoe. We noted how he was struggling with a very tight race car before that competition caution, but take a listen to what he had to say on the radio. They might have bigger issues. Well, maybe this is a User skirt it hits every time on corner entry like it's super loud when it does it and like even in the pits right there it's just weird i don't really know what it is same cold pressure high pressure but this is the whole time and that's the key there steve i got a question for you you know there's rub blocks back there it could be bombing out that shock potentially but you don't really think of that being something on low air pressure but if it's happening all the time this could just be simply a setup issue right that's absolutely right parker that's why that question came back if it improved that tells me it is probably the rub block as the tire builds air pressure the car travels a little bit less it doesn't get as close to the ground but air pressure doesn't change as much shock travel so if you're bottoming out the shock that's not going to change as we see Denny Hamlin methodically work his way by the eight of Tyler Reddick up into the top five right by you got the 11 running right here you have Kyle Busch trying to take the fifth position right here from Reddick Bubba Wallace and the 45 right behind him Toyota's looking pretty good yeah Christopher Bell just in front of Denny Hamlin right now he's running in that third position so yes you're right Toyota's very strong but they are still chasing a Ford and a Chevrolet in Joey Logano and William Byron and that fight for the lead is really heating up right now yeah William Byron is definitely faster than Joey Logano right now so we're learning early in this race that William Byron has good long run speed William to the bottom of the racetrack lap traffic right in front of these guys so far the 22's had that clean air on the front of that car it's been helping him but with this lap traffic it's going to present an opportunity for William Marty Boy, William Byron showing the strength, as you guys mentioned, in the long run of this car. And this was a concern for Paul Wolf this morning. He said, I know practice didn't look great for us. I know we have short run car. I'm worried about the long run. And there he goes, William Byron to the lead, Rick. Yeah, William Byron taking the top spot away. He made it look easy going by Logano. He'll Joey have to pull away as now he will have to worry about the lap traffic. Yeah, Joey let him go, but Joey looked really uncomfortable right there, guys. You have to think that he pushed too hard those first five or ten laps after that five, after that last restart. Started suffering right now, and he's losing lots of time. You know, we talk about pushing too hard, Junior, but sometimes it doesn't matter. I mean, the car has to do its job too. If you, it, it's only, I'm sorry, it's only 26 laps into a run. Like he should not be falling off this bad. They're going to have to make some changes to this car to get it to hang on a longer run. I'll do the math for you. 49 to go in stage one, and that means green flag pit stops will be coming up next. The mind-blowing Ford F-150 Lightning is here, and you could win one during the NASCAR playoffs. You can scan the QR code now or visit NASCAR.com slash Ford Playoffs promo to get your chance to win the most innovative F-150 Ford has ever built. We saw Martin Trex Jr. on the left side turn left, and then he kind of got stuck behind J.J. Yaley coming to pit road. Luckily made it. This is a pit road. It's very easy to miss. Truex, a champion of the sport. He made sure he got on pit road early. Probably going to lose a little time in the cycle, Dave. The five of Kyle Larson gives up 16th place. He'll get four Goodyear tires in Sunoco fuel. No front grip. When I go up the hill, the rear swings free. Cliff told him he's going to go in a very different direction this time as we fix him up. And you see that 19 finishing up service. Martin overall pretty happy with that race car. Just dodged a bullet there on the pit lane with another car. Again, Kyle Busch on pit road here. He was complaining of no rear grip through turns one and two towards the end of that run and then complained about the rear end just feeling like it was up in the air. I mean, he just was not in the racetrack. It'll be four Goodyear tires for him and so could fuel as these pit stops unfold, Dave. Denny Hamlin on and off pit road. Good stop for him as he will get his four tires and fuel. And you see a 
Hey guys, also on pit road, Ryan Blaney. This run was better. That is good news. Little loose up the hill into turn one. That was his only complaint. He also got four tires and fuel. 22 of Joey Lagan. I mean, it looks like the yellow. There's so many cars on pit road. It's crazy. Stall number one, William Byron right behind him. Austin Dillon leading as well. And his car actually got better the longer he ran. Joey saying the car freed up a bunch, way too free when he lost the lead. And look at that time they're losing here. Can't get the left front off. Drastic amount of time lost by Joey Logano and the 22 team. Steve, you talk about not making mistakes on pit road. That's going to be a big one for them. William Byron coming down pit road from the lead. He said his car got free the longer he ran, but they were very happy with a long run speed for William Byron, Parker. Marty Christopher Bell also on pit road, hitting out of the top three. He's just been very happy in that race car, especially where it goes a long run. Four tires for him. We'll see how it turns out on this run. That long stop from the 22 should give the 24 just a gigantic lead. That was going to be a pretty good battle, but we saw the issues for the 22. Now Bubba Wallace on pit road, Dave. Strong run so far for Wallace. Can't run any more wrecking here. The, he, he was so, so much out of tire that they wanted to bring him home, but really good solid run so far. Fell back there at the end of the run, so early run looking good for Wallace. It's later in the run that the car fell off. Rest of the field very happy to see Bubba Wallace come to pit road. Ty Gibbs as well as you see on the pylon because that will basically complete the pit cycle. There was a time there a bunch of playoff cars were lapped down as Bubba Wallace was on the racetrack. Not a long time, but yeah, any lap can kind of derail your playoffs, Rick. So now the cycle's complete. We have 39 to go. Back to what the, the drivers were talking about. William Byron, you've left pit road. You have brand new tires. I'm telling you on the radio, guys, you're going to run 39 on this set now. Take your time, nice and easy on that gas pedal. A few that are still to come to pit road, but for the most part, everyone has gone through the cycle, and that means that 31 cars still on the lead lap. As William Byron has shuffled up to the front, and Byron now with about a second lead over Kyle Bush, who Kyle Bush, the 18 team who had a, a, a poor stop on the first time on the pit road have made up for it a lot better stop now and they're less than a second behind Byron for the lead. You see Christopher Bell here in the 20 trying to hold off Martin Truex Jr. in the 19. Those two running fourth and fifth. Dave. Are you kidding me Rick those were the words from Kyle Larson coming on to pit road now could not see anything on his dash but it's quote making that noise again no power just another one he said it looks like the engine may be gone on the five. Oh my goodness the five car broken engine a week ago at Daytona now here they are in the playoffs another potential engine Which issue. Water and oil temp right now. Uh, two of seven. And you see I why I don't have oil temp on this first stage. Here in the radio, but you just see how hard these are to work, work right? You see the duck work, the air boxes. It's a lot of paneling that kind of hides. Oh Whoa. my goodness! Eric that was Jones up the moment. racetrack. I thought we were getting ready to get a yellow with a 43. What a save by Jones! My goodness, that was a big way that you just see the five car. I mean, there's nothing you can really do at this point. So take a look at what just happened with Eric Jones down on the bottom, almost onto the apron, and shot up the racetrack. Yeah, went down there to the apron. We see that used a lot in turn one at Darlington. It's not unusual, but Eric's car did not like it. Got really loose, did a nice job of saving it. Steven says we're going to run it for now. We're going to run it for now. This right. is huge right here, guys. So run it for now. What that tells me is that they feel like they have an issue. They're not going to go behind the wall because they probably understand what they think it is. And they probably can't fix it. So run it at least until the stage ends 35 more laps. The big issue for the five, I mean, you never want to have a failure, but this is stage one. I mean, this is a car that would probably run inside the top 10, receive stage points. So this is worst case scenario. Talking about error codes. This is the new world of NASCAR, right? It's not check the spark plugs out, look at them. It's run through your digital dash. So many sensors on these engines. They're going to try. So now, want to talk about busy? Now Larson is trying to get out of everybody's way with a power issue, run the digital dash, dissect the information to the team. I mean, Kyle Larson, this, even being slow, this is going to take a lot of work from the driver. And want to remind you, the bottom four in points at the end of the Bristol race, after three races, they're eliminated from the playoffs. So you don't want to get in a hole after here. race one by of two. the playoffs. Yeah, remember, this is it's not really one of the favorites. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I, I picked Kyle Larson to win the championship. 
I'm just trying to look and see just how bad it is. And right down the back straightaway, he looked pretty even. He sees he's behind, you know, in front of his teammate. This is going to put him three laps down right here. Well, then right now, you know, if I'm Cliff Daniels right now, not only is my heart sunk because of my issue, but I hate to see that 24 behind me. Junior, right? If I know I have an engine, the last thing I want to do is break an engine in front of a teammate, have him run through my oil. So, you know, there's all these things that I have to worry about. I wonder if you might want to encourage him to try to fight to stay in front of his teammate just because that puts him three down. It's going to be harder and harder to get those back. Yeah. So while Byron is up front, you're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Darlington. Telecast presented by T-Mobile. Darlington and Kyle Larson have not been on good terms this year. This was in May, running inside the top 10. The five car with that cool throwback paint scheme, unfortunately not a good day, had an engine issue. And then last week at Daytona, tries to get out of the pack. Now luckily at this point he was locked in the playoffs, but the engine breaks on this five car at Daytona. Disappointing, looking for some momentum. And then here today, he came to pit road saying he had this issue. We saw them go under the hood. Now he's rejoined the racetrack, Dave, and he's, I mean, he's, his lap times are pretty good. Heck, he's in front of Kyle Busch, the second place car, but he's three laps down. No, I know, it looks very good and a little bit of a wiggle there, but that's normal at Darlington. He said, yeah, for some reason, now it's running. He's been reading back the error codes on his data screens to the crew, and the interesting thing is, crew chief Cliff Daniels came down off of the pit box talking to the engineers, looking at laptops, working with the engine group, and as well, Chad Knauss down here helping out as well. So the scene is different than it was years ago. Now, you gather around a laptop, you look for error codes, and try to come up with what caused that. Was it just an anomaly, or is it a terminal issue? Right now, it doesn't look terminal. Yeah, and Dave, when Kyle Larson came out behind William Byron, he was aware of it. Actually, this was communication on the radio. Can I help him here or no? This puts him three down. I mean, it would help, but he's got to drive him. You got to go here. Be a spark. Be a spark. Your race. Sparks and rhythm. They're looking at the big picture. They knew that Kyle Busch was right there. He wants to win this stage and have the momentum that they've got going right now. 
Lawrence. It's just so tough to ask your teammate. And I don't think Kyle Larson would. I don't think we saw how hard he raced even Chase out. He wouldn't ask William Byron to give up a position, a potential stage win. Now, if Chase could, excuse me, if Kyle could drive up to William Byron's rear bumper, I'm sure he would let him go, but not at the expense of giving up the lead. The 18 has already made its way by, and so running in that second spot. Parker. All right, Rick, and think about what he's accomplished here just in a short bit of the first stage of this race. In the first stop, he went from around fourth place all the way back to ninth because they had a gun issue on the right front. The nut got stuck in the gun. It was a slow stop. He drove up six spots, then on that green flag stop, got himself up into the top three and now has the speed to try and chase down William Byron. And I'm not surprised to see this. Before the race on the pre-race show, Kim, he told me this car's strength was the long run, and I think we're seeing that right now. Well, his teammate Martin Trex Jr. started this race 17th now worked to p6 they just narrowly missed the playoffs and i talked to crew chief james small this morning and he said we are still here to win races so i asked him would winning the first race of the playoffs be disappointing because you're not in it he paused thought about it and said you know actually it would be bittersweet to win this race here right now truex pretty happy with the car just made a minor air pressure adjustment on that last stop, Marty. Jim, let's talk about the pit stop last time down for Joey Logano. Came in second. He is now running 11th. I asked the team what happened. Braxton Brandon, the Jackman, said, hey, totally my fault. 100% my fault. So, Steve, two things here. It could have been much worse if that happened under caution and certainly much worse if it was late in the race. This is the second stop of what could be 11, 12 stops today. So, doesn't hurt him too much right now, but they did lose track for this year. You're absolutely right, Marty. He's back in the 11th position, lost about 10 spots under yellow. It would have been a tremendous issue. So you see the Jackman goes in. He jacks it up, but the car kind of falls back down. Either the handle's not tight or he wasn't good on the jack post. Now he goes in, gets it reset. I mean, just the, these pit stops are so fast now that giving up four, five, six, seven seconds on a nine second pit stop almost double the time. So no damage to the car, very recoverable but cost the 22 10 spots as Marty reported. Logano had led 64 laps to start this race and so that now has mired him back in the 11th spot and still fighting to break into the top 10 with just 19 laps to go in stage one. Looking at the big picture as far as Larson goes, remember a year ago he won at Bristol and won at Kansas, which are the next two races, Kansas and Bristol. He won there last fall and so you win and you advance to the next round, but that does still put him in a hole. Yeah, we ranked the playoff drivers in a bunch of categories to try to get us an idea. And for the 22, he was the sixth best of the playoff drivers. So an area they have been pretty solid, cost them some spots today. Take a look at Bubba Wallace trying to take a spot away now from Chase Elliott. As Elliott had a little bobble there, almost up into the wall, and Bubba Wallace waves to Chase Elliott as he goes by. I, I, listen, Bubba Wallace. I didn't know about this team swap, but it's, it's a little convoluted. It's hard to follow. I understand why they did it, but it's just hard to explain. But Bubba has really turned it on the second half of this year, right? We saw him have such a great car at Michigan. I know it's super emotional to not get that win. But I said it before the race, right? He didn't have to win. He just needed to be in the picture. And that's what he got. He got those final laps, that crazy restart with Kevin Harvick. He's a better race car driver because of that opportunity. The commitment back to Bubba. He gets his contract extension at 23-11. He's just doing a really nice job behind the wheel. Bubba Wallace right now also outside the top 10 running 12th. Make sure to do download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the action with free live scoring. There's in-car cameras as well as radio broadcast. Search NASCAR in your app store to download. You can start a free trial. And look at the crowd here enjoying 
from Darlington Raceway, the Cookout Southern 500. And it was pretty electric earlier today. I mean, out here in the Midway, there was events going on. There's some sort of college event because there had to be a thousand college At kids least that thousand. came in there with all their supply. We'll They're, say supplies. That's a good general term, but they were definitely prepared for a good time. And this wasn't a good right time right here. Brad Keselowski, Cody Ware off turn two. Brad tried to get underneath Cody, made a little bit of contact. That's Darlington. You'll see that a lot tonight. Brad running in 18th position. Pretty strong run for that team. It's 23 car of Ty Gibbs. He actually passed William Byron to get himself back in the lead lap. He pitted one lap later than William, but he sat right there the whole time. William's not been able to get back by him. In the pre-race, we did trending up, trending down. William Byron was trending down. One top 10, Marty, in 18 races. I know he ran well here in the spring, but I didn't believe it. He's making a believer out of me here with nine to go. I got to be honest, and I got to confess, I had him out in round one, so I didn't believe it either, Steve. But hard to believe he has nine laps, about to be eight laps from his first stage win. Listen to this. Since Talladega in April, I asked William Byron what was going on this summer. He said everything we did in the sim just didn't work. The biggest key to the playoffs for us, coming back to racetracks for a second time. We ran well at Darlington. You mentioned that, Steve. We run well at Kansas, too. But that second trip back to a track, Steve, sometimes can be huge for a team. Obviously big for William Byron tonight. We see some tight battling right here between Penske teammates, the 22 and the 12. But to Marty's point, wow. oh, oh boy, man. tight turned into contact. What is going on? Oh, man, this is how these playoffs are going to be. They're Don't be give an inch. I like it. Blaney still trying to hold his ground as he has that high line. And Logano diving back in on the inside of turn three. But Ryan Blaney fights by on the outside. Yeah, seven laps to go to the end of the stage. They're racing for points right here. Bubba Wallace says the best seat in the house. He's not sure what's going on. Again, down Logano. The, down, yeah, down into one. Logano does not get clear. Oh, almost. Yes, it lift off the gas or take the teammate out. Blaney, I think when he hit Blaney, Blaney said, oh, okay. We're going to race for this one. Coming up on six laps to go in the stage. So to circle back to what Marty was talking about as we take another look, the 22 slides up in the contact between the 22 and the 12. Second time to a racetrack. Confidence, but also those tools. We talk about simulators and simulation and all of those things. If you've got to run this car and if you had some success, you have some baselines and you know what knobs you're looking to adjust to come back. My goodness. I'm telling you what, I'm waiting for one of these guys to wreck. I got him right, you know, man, I'm Y'all supposed to give me the spot going into turn one. <laughs> Y'all, nobody's lifting. <laughs> and Logano wouldn't do it either. Remember, Logano's one of those guys who's he's become almost the hardest guy to pass on the racetrack. We just saw Bubba Wallace do it. I think you can lose the almost. <laughs> well, okay. well, and that's a compliment, though. I don't think he's inappropriate, but he is, man, he, he gets every inch out of that rear bumper left to right. Once again, guys, you see Joey Logano. He was advancing on all these guys, and then toward the end of this run, now he's starting to back up. So the second time we've seen this car not be good on long runs, they're going to have to figure that out. Here you go right here, trying to lap Ty Gibbs. Again, Ty Gibbs, the last car on the lead lap, and William Byron has about a two-second lead over second place Kyle Busch, so he negotiates his way around Ty Gibbs and puts him back one lap down, and that means that now we have 20 cars on the lead lap Playoff driver Daniel Suarez is running in that 20th position. Well, you mentioned Suarez in 20th, but look above Suarez on the left side in that pylon. Harvick back to 19th after that issue. LaJoy running inside the top 20. Keselowski having a nice run. How about Cole Custer? Been a bumpy year for the 41 car, running 16th. So some names on that pylon having really good days early in Darlington. And three laps remaining in stage one. Byron has led 45 laps already. Yeah, Chastain caught these guys. They, they got bottled up off turn two, and he had to make a major move to keep it running to the back of them. He did just that as we come up on two laps now in stage one. Byron and the caution's going to come out. Chase Elliott involved as well as the 14 of Briscoe. Got super free, hit the wall. And a lot of damage. The right rear pointed the wrong direction on Chase Elliott's car. Yeah, that's the toe link broken. You have to come to pit road and try to get that repaired. There you see the damage in the front of the, 20, uh, the 14 of Chase Briscoe. We already know Larson has had trouble in this race. Here's two more playoff contenders. Elliott and Larson both Maybe I would right consider to be favorites. Know. 
So you see the crab walking, the right rear tire pointed to the right. One change this week okay, heading into the playoffs. Right rear. Damage vehicle okay, policy. Right rear tow link here. You're getting right on the radio. The so listen. The damage vehicle policy, there's a lot of things to go with it, but one part, the most important part, is the clock. You had six minutes to repair your car from yellow line to yellow line. Guys, let's take a look what happened. You see Chase Elliott enter the corner, and wow. Oh, just went smoke. straight up the track. Then right up in front of these guys, nowhere for them to go. Yeah, Chase Elliott collected the 14. Looks like he was on his own up there and got into the wall. This is going to be the fourth stage win this year. And first of the last 16 races, though, for William Byron, because the stage will end under caution. So that damage vehicle policy, six minutes was the allowed time. These cars have proven to be a little tougher to work on. So moving into the playoffs, NASCAR has changed the clock limit to 10 minutes for the Cup Series. Very important. Their goal is to not eliminate guys that can repair their cars. And that's what we're going to see right here. Now, the hope is that it is a tow link and not a lower or upper control arm on this nine car. We'll have to see what the repairs look like. Marty. You heard Chase Elliott say, I just got way too free, but that car shot off the racetrack. Alan Guffs is in the leader that he is, said, I want to make sure I know who's going over the wall. And that 10 minutes, Steve, that you mentioned could be huge. We've seen teams be able to complete that change in about six and a half minutes, six minutes 45. So the teams went to NASCAR, said, hey, this new car, we need more time to be able to make repairs on pit road. You see the green and white checker to end stage one here with William Byron taking the stage win. But now his teammate Chase Elliott on pit road, Rick, trying to get these repairs done. Can they get them done before the 10 minutes are up? All right, so the mechanic at the top of the suspension, that's definitely the tow link. I circled what I think is a bent lower control arm as well. We're gonna have to have update this when we come back, Rick. Repairs for Chase Elliott, big playoff implications. NASCAR on USA is brought to you by New Coke Zero Sugar, now even more delicious. And by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G, America's largest, fastest, and now most reliable 5G network. So much work now being done with, to the nine of Chase Elliott. Steve, what does it look like as far as getting this fixed as the other teams are on pit road as well? Eddie Hamlin hits pit road, finished second in the stage. Nine stage points for him and a good run. The car needs to be a little bit tighter, a little bit freer the further up he goes, Kim. Yeah, Dane finished that stage P6. He said, I need more rear grip. Gets too loose, too quick. They will make an air pressure adjustment as they give them four sticker tires and snowball fuel, Parker. Same thing for the 18 at Kyle Busch. They're just still too loose and lacking that rear grip in the 18, Marty. First stage win since April for William Byron. Talk about needed points of the car was just a, a little bit free, but they'll lose a couple spots here on pit road. Kyle Busch's team comes through once again. They gain two spots. Meanwhile, you see there Chase Elliott still sitting on pit road trying to get those repairs made. You're absolutely right. Right, Marty, Rick, you questioned it. Well, I think they're doing okay with the tow link. I just think they have other issues. You see mechanics underneath. I circled it once before. I think the lower control arm is bent. Luckily, it's 10 minutes, because if it was six, this team would already be looking at an elimination. We're going to have to see if the nine can have repairs. 10 minutes, Rick. It's a long DVP. Let's <laughs> well, take a commercial. Oh, there we go. There's a lower yeah. control arm with a tow link on it. So, okay, right here, real quick. If we freeze it, oh, there it is. There's the other half. There's everything you need to see. It's busted. We'll see if they can repair it. Again, inside of 10 minutes. Well, stage one is complete. That means stage two coming up. The legends are back. A Petty, an Earnhardt, a Jarrett. They are all going to take stage two here at Darlington Raceway and the Southern 500. Welcome back to Darlington as we get ready to start stage two. Bringing you stage two in the booth here. It's going to be a Petty and Jared and Earnhardt, guys. We've done this before. We've had a lot of fun. We're going to yep. do it again. Yep. Talk about what you've seen so far. Uh, incredible, but just what we expect from the playoffs, things that we thought weren't going to yes. happen here. Uh, certainly a lot of hard racing and some cars up front that maybe we weren't thinking about, but the, the problems, mistakes, things yes. happening. Mistakes. That, that's the things. Mistakes that are happening on pit road, mistakes, slow pit stops that are getting guys out of the cycle. And then we end that stage with a couple of contenders, uh, the 14 of Chase Briscoe and the 9 of, of Chase Elliott. 
uh, in that little bit of, a, of an incident there. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, the nine car Chase Elliott's been on pit road trying to repair lots of, le of right rear yeah. suspension damage. Steve, what's the update on the nine? continue repairs on the nine the jack is underneath it so let's take a look we saw what happened to the nine by hitting the wall let's go and take a look at our toyota virtual card exactly what this repair is all about it's a rear suspension issue it's on the right rear let's get rid of the bodywork let's get the fuel cell out of the way let's circle and highlight the damaged parts on this car right here so as we come around to the right you're going to see there's an upper and a lower control and they look like an a they hold the car in the right location right so the lower one is there the upper one is up here. This is the tow link right there. So if we go back to some replays of this nine car, you're going to see these damaged parts. Basically, they're crippled. They're, they're destroyed. Here's the lower control arm. That's supposed to be straight. It is bent in a U. And then the upper control arm, we thought it was just a tow link. They throw it on the ground. There's the whole aluminum upper control arm and a tow link. This is major, major issues. And look at the clock, zero chance. This night car is getting back on the racetrack. It will be day over for Chase Elliott. The leader of the points coming in has made a major trip up at Darlington. This is incredible. Heartbreaking for Chase Elliott. Just got into turn one, got a little bit loose. He's gonna carry this one for a few days. As his yeah. team tries to clean up this issue. You know, we talk about in the regular season why they're racing so hard to try to win that regular season championship. This could be the exact reason and hope without winning a race that he could get through on points. The five car of Kyle Larson came down pit road with an engine issue. It's still a mystery on this five car exactly what's going on with him and what he can recover out of the night. And look what it's done to the points with the five car all the way down there beyond the cutoff. And Chase Elliott came in here with a bunch of points and a big advantage on the field. That's going to cost him half, I think, of the cushion that he had. Listen, when we had our pre-race picks for the Final Four, we both, almost all of us, had Larson and Chase moving forward. This levels the playing field as far as the points lead that Chase had coming in here. The clock has expired on the nine car, so that's the end of the day for the Napa Chevrolet and Chase Elliott. to build down into turn three. Kyle Busch taking the lead. Has his teammate Denny Hamlin right on his back bumper. William Byron back to third position. Williams pretty much dominated this race up to this point, but have some, have some work to try to get by those two Toyotas up front. I think William Byron has shown that his car maybe, it not only has speed at the beginning, but really the long run speed is really impressive for them. And that allows them and kind of opens the door for them to look at, look at different strategies and not have to be so worried about being right on that lap exactly when they pit and when they don't. Right back there in fifth place, Eric Jones, that 43 car. So good here at Darlington. Showing a lot of speed. He's worried about the balance of that car being loose. I think as the night as the night comes in, the track tends to drop. Maybe the grip comes up in that car. Listen, hey, we talk about it being an Earnhardt and Jared and a Petty up here. It, it's been a long time. It's probably been since Lee Petty since we've seen a 43 car or Petty car <laughs> in, in the top five here at Darlington. Seriously, uh, my dad never ran that well here. He won a Southern 500 and won a couple of races, but this was not one of those places. So Eric and that group have put together solid runs, solid runs. If they can just close these runs, if we go back to stage ones and stage twos of a lot of races, they're in contention. Uh, this team has made a huge, huge leap forward this year with Mike Beam and all those guys. Yeah, Dave Ellen's new crew chief came on board. Spent a couple years at Junior Motorsports working for us winning championships. And he's a real talent for Eric Jones right now as we watch this battle here. The 99 car. Kind of made a good comeback. Suarez up to 15th place. Yeah, it is a great comeback. Yes. I mean, by that team and that driver to understand their situation, I mean, they got a, a break early on, which they knew they yep. needed to do that. But still, navigating your way through traffic here is not an easy thing. Daniel being patient and taking what it'll give him. And then right behind Daniel Suarez, I want to make a point to talk about a young man, Corey LaJoy, in that seven car. Corey had a great run in the top 15 here last year in this race. I talked to him this morning. Feels good about this team and what they can become. Parker, what you got on the seven? Right, Dale, and let this uh, run by them is all the more remarkable considering that their first stop of the day, they put four tires on, and as Corey pulled away, he got about two boxes away from their pit box that Ryan Sparks' crew chief told him, stop, stop, stop. 
go back. He had a left rear loose. I actually saw it, it was physically loose. The team caught it, tightened that up, and kept him obviously on the lead lap and now having this awesome day, but an amazing call by Ryan Sparks and Inspire Motorsport team. I, I, I want to say something about Corey. You said something in, in pre-race where this was a place, Darlington was a place where a driver could make a difference. Corey LaJoy, the racetracks that a driver makes a difference, he takes this seven car and puts it in the top 10, puts it in the top 15. He has done an incredible job. We go back to Atlanta, so many races where they've been in contention to have solid runs, and he's doing it again today. Eight car right here. Let's listen to Tyler Reddick's radio. Damn it. Make sure the bleeding's done here. We'll get him back. We're good on the long run. Take care of it. Keep him cool so we don't do nothing down here. 10 4, good thing we only got 1,000 more laps to go, so I'll stay on it. <laughs> it is a long race. That's what it feels like. It, yeah. does, it does feel like a bad. You can be a little bit more patient when you know that this thing's going to go another two and a half or three hours. Look how close he runs to the wow. wall. Great camera work right there. Wow. Tyler Reddick runs the fence better than anybody. Since you? <laughs> I thought I ran the fence. Then Kyle Larson came along and he showed me some things that yep. I wasn't even doing right. And now you got Tyler Reddick. I think the guys with a lot of dirt experience are very, very good at it. Yeah. There's a reason they mount the camera up on top of the fender there, not on the side, <laughs> uh, the side of the fender. Oh, look at this battle right here. Big run for the 34. He's going to check up a little bit. Michael McDowell thinks twice about going down in the corner that low. The two cars kind of got them all held up here. Cedric almost three wide off of turn four. Yeah, I think Suarez is quite a bit faster. It's just making the right move at the right time, knowing where your strengths are and his weaknesses are to, to make that move. You try to make it too soon, then you find yourself in trouble and getting passed and then have to repass cars you're in front of. Yeah, so let me ask you guys this question. How frustrating is that for a guy like Suarez? You talk about his car being faster. You catch the guy, you can't get around him. You look in the rearview mirror, and the three guys that you passed 15 laps ago are back hammering on your bumper. And that takes away a lot of tools that you have to be able to try to make that pass because yeah. you almost have to you can't do everything you want to do because you you might lose those spots so you have to play defense and offense at the same time really tough michael mcdowell getting around that seven car of joy he's starting to make his way back forward we saw him have a michael mcdowell speaking of had a great qualifying effort here uh has always run well here uh, fell off a little in that first run but maybe he was looking for the the nighttime racing that we're going to do which is more of than what we saw during the, the sunlight Couple buddies running nose to tail here. Ryan Blaney, the forward performance cam, right on the back bumper here. Bubba Wallace in that 45. Yeah, Bubba doing a nice job here. A uh, really good, yeah. uh, solid effort. Uh, we've seen him fast up inside the top five at times, but uh, you can see never really getting out of shape, just doing his job here so far. Yeah, I, I've been impressed by by him tonight, and, and I'll say why. It is, He's racing for a team championship, for that car owner championship. And, and But he's driving it like he's racing for a driver championship. He's run that car tonight. He's put it in the right place. He's been patient at the right time in this first segment. Um, and he's just been steady. And that's what you know you won here, Dale. You, you, you've got to just be patient and put yourself in the right place. So if anything does happen late in the race, you get an opportunity to try a different strategy. You can capitalize on it. As we look at the Toyota driver update, you have Bubba Wallace running right there in eighth place. We've got five Toyotas running in the top ten. Truex has drove all the way through the field. One fast car tonight. And the two Gibbs boys up front. Yeah, pretty impressive. Denny Hamlin in second. Kyle Busch leads at Darlington. We'll be back. NASCAR fans, don't let anything pass you by. The official app of NASCAR Tracks lets you stay up to date on the latest race and event information from all your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. Our aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Geico. Giving you those awesome shots as we look down at Darlington Motor Speedway, historic racetrack with a great race. Let's listen to the 24 radio, William Byron. I might be having an engine issue, not totally sure yet. And we've heard about the five car, complaining about the same thing. Said he heard some noises he wasn't familiar with, came down pit road, lost a lot of laps, and now William Byron, unsure about what's going on under the hood of his Valvoline Chevrolet, Marty. 
And Rudy Fugel heard that radio transmission and just dropped his head. They know the issue with his teammate Kyle Larson. But he hasn't said anything since that radio transmission, and the speed doesn't look too far off. He wasn't third when he said that. He has fallen back a little bit. Ross Chastain got by him, but we're going to certainly monitor what's going on with William Byron, who won stage one earlier on today, already won Hendrick issue. Hopefully they don't have another one with the engine. It feels really flat, dead, and it's loud in here says it's flat and loud inside the car. So what I think, Steve mentioned this earlier, there could be an issue with the with the exhaust, whereas they've not really, they're not having an engine problem, but there may be some separation or something in the exhaust because he's hearing a different pitch. Yeah. When yeah. I watch the car on the racetrack, I still see the car drive down the straight at the same speed. This is a place where if you're down a little bit, use a little more throttle in the corner if you can. He's telling his driver, hey, we might have an issue that's yes. just lost a little power, but hey, That'll help us through the middle of the corner, Marty. He said it, Junior feels flat and, quote, dead. That's what he called it. And I think he's talking about when he gets back to the gas. Rudy Fugel trying to coach his driver. Lap he said, hey, the lap times here. are good. There you go. And he said, listen, we've got to play where we are right now. So dealing with the engine issue, but I don't know what flat and dead would mean, yeah, but getting back to the throttle, that's their issue. I thought he said it loud in here. Loud in here. Yeah. He did. And, he did. and that tells me there's he a said that too. Yeah, separation in the exhaust somewhere that's changed the pitch for the driver, you guys. I'm and, sure y'all dealt with that in your and, and listen, that's a great point. You know, you know how when you're beside someone, how you used to be beside someone, the pitch inside the car would change. And you think something yeah. in the air inside the car changes. The pressure changes. So many things change. So that makes you feel something a little bit different. I am going to say something about being a little bit down on power here. Long many years ago in the last century when we raced here a lot of times, you have two ignition boxes and you'd knock the timing out of the second ignition box to save the tires. You'd run as hard as you could for the first 10 or 15 laps, flip to the next box and go from 36 degrees of timing to 34 degrees and it'd keep the car from spinning. Also did that at Wilkesboro where you just came from third place because <laughs> it'd keep you from buzzing the tires yeah. up off the corner. But you could still make time on these old tires because the drop off is so great. It's hard for people to understand just because you have 10,000 horsepower. You don't need 10,000 horsepower to run around a racetrack this this slick. Yeah, it could just be a situation that I realize they've run these cars 26 or a little more than that count in the other races, but they're still learning things that are new to them. And part of that is the sound because you go by that somewhat as a driver, even more than your feel. I'm watching him. His lap times are every bit as good. Uh, the last three laps is what Kyle Busch has been as the leader of the race. So it's just something if it feels a little bit flat, uh, it could be that you know, your tires are giving up this something with the way the racetrack is now that it has cooled off quite a bit. Watching Denny Hamlin here stalk in the back of that 18 car. He's been about this distance from the from the lead car of Kyle Busch for quite a while now, Parker. Right, and keep an eye on Kyle Busch here. His car's been building loose throughout the night and just get a little looser as we've gone further into the night. But guys, we've heard about all these issues in the Hendrick cars. Take a listen to what Kyle Busch had to say about his car under the last caution. My second and third gear indicator on the dash is confused. Like it'll it'll say second and third or it'll say third and second. It's not backwards, but it just keeps flashing. And that's not a big issue because you really only use those gears on restarts. But, you know, those are the sorts of things you don't want to hear in a long race like this that maybe could creep up and become worse, especially when you're dealing with electronics. Hopefully it's just the screen that's messing up. But that's a little issue there going on for 18 right now. He obviously saved Denny Hamlin with a little more pace than the lead car, Kyle Busch. How does he set this pass up? I think Denny has probably saved his tires. I mean, he's really good at that, and we talk about how good he is on longer runs here. It's because he way, the way that he goes about driving the car. Kyle Busch went out there, set a really fast pace to start with. You can just see Denny kind of riding there, and I just think right now, he knows where his car is better. And what I've been watching, Kyle Busch is really good through one and two and on the exit of two. Denny's a lot better through three and four, and I think that's where he tries to make his pass. Also, you see Denny run a little bit lower, getting a little bit of air to get underneath his car back to the diffuser to give him some downforce. He all sits just a little bit. Now into turn three and four, he runs a similar line right up against the wall, but watch him turn down for the corner exit. Kind of comes down the racetrack. Earlier, he was running a little bit lower, driving off the bottom of turn four. That time he followed Kyle Busch, lost a little bit of time. You see that 18 car getting smaller. Yeah, and that 18 car had not been right up against the wall. I'd seen Denny a couple of times be right against there on his entry, but he saw Kyle Busch go in higher, so he had to adjust his line a little bit there. Kyle Busch, smart driver too, understanding 
how he can make things a little harder, even though it is a teammate that he's racing. We're coming up on pit stops too. As Daniel Suarez is the first car on the pit road. Parker. All right, pitting out of 18th place position. This team's had incredible recovery from that penalty that they started the race with, had the drive to, went one lap down, got that back. And now they told Daniel just recently, and he's being too nice to some of his competitors out there, giving too much room. There'll be four tires in Snoko Fuel as these green flag stops start to unfold for the leaders. This will give him a big advantage with those tires, hoping for, you know, no, no yellows to come out, catch him on pit road. He's going to make up a lot of time on these guys that are staying out on the racetrack for a lap or two. As, as we watch Kyle Busch uh, and, and Denny Hamlin here, Denny's running, caught him, and then kind of falling back into that rhythm. Denny may be thinking, I want my pit crew to pass him. You, you know what I mean? I want to make that move on pit road. I want to get in harder, make sure I stay under my limit, because we know Denny's had a million pit road penalties this year, and, and it's always kind of edgy when he comes to pit road. But he's got an incredible pit crew. Calling for a pit stop right here. And then he's smart enough to know that he doesn't need to show his full hand right now. 18 car. Fact. He's going to come to pit road. The 11 of Denny Hamlin stays on the racetrack. Marty. Kyle Busch coming down pit road. Joey Logano also coming down pit road. Probably a little bit earlier than a lot of these teams wanted to, Junior. But they're trying to jump and get new tires on, which are so fast here at Darlington. Logano lost all that track position from that bad stop earlier. Trying to make up some right here, Parker. All right, Marty. It seems like they may have started to be forced by what the 99 was for us. Coming down pit road there so early. The 18 was saying, I, your marks. And then on that lap down the back track said, all right, we're pitting this time. Remember, you get a little loose, they'll make an air pressure. Just the 18, Marty. Austin Dillon was desperate for a caution there, Parker, because he sat in the free pass spot for so long, but they were not able to get it parked way too tight on entry. You see Tyler Reddick on pit road. William Byron also on pit road has not said a word so far about the engine, but it does not sound full song as he leaves pit road, Dave. Ryan Blaney and Kevin Harvick have already been on and off of pit road. Now Denny Hamlin gives up that what became the lead for four tires and fuel. This car operating very well. Denny was catching the 18 before this round of pit stops. Keep an eye on the top right of your screen here. The 18 car, Kyle Busch coming around turn three and four. The 11 of Denny Hamlin on pit road. That's the blend of what will eventually be the race for the lead once all this cycles through. This is off turn two. There's the 18, there's the 11 on the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Busch will beat Denny Hamlin. That's how much that difference is. Kyle coming to pit road sooner, gets out on the racetrack with those new tires, pops off a lap. That's how much further it puts him ahead of that 11 car. It's impressive, man. That, that is, and Denny had a little bit faster pit stop than what Kyle had when we saw it. I think Kyle had a 10-4 and Denny had like a 9-8 a or something right in that range. Uh, so you see, just as you guys said, coming to pit road earlier, as we saw Suarez, as we saw Joey Logano, those guys, it gives you that extra lap, that extra lap and a half uh, to really close that gap or to stretch that gap. Great move by Kyle there. Check that, outside, inside. Bubba Wallace in that 45 car on the lead. He's coming to pit road as well. I should hand the lead over to Brad Kozlowski, unless he too comes to pit road in that six car. One of the toughest pit roads to get onto. Oh. Making green flag pit stops. We some, see some of the best in the business miss that entrance. Dave. So Bubba was getting a little coaching on turning down a little earlier on the exit off of two, and that helped. He was told the faster cars are doing that. That made his lap times better as well. So four tires of fuel here for Bubba Wallace. Now he waited longer than anyone to come to pit road. That's going to cost him a lot of time, giving up that, you know, that lap time on the racetrack. Now the six of Keselowski still out on the racetrack. And you see on the left side of the screen, 31.99. Kyle Busch with newer tires, 30.13. You're giving up a ton of time on the racetrack, sticking around out there. Brad Kozlowski still on the track, yet to come to pit road. What's the strategy on this six car? NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Darlington telecast presented by T-Mobile. We saw Ross Chastain come to pit road from fifth place. Kim, what's going on? Well, they're not certain. Ross was describing a squishy circumstance, so they brought him down thinking he had a loose wheel, changed the tires. He went back out. Right now, he got back on the radio and said something is broken. It is still doing it. I do not know what is wrong with this race car. So trouble for what was a good run going for Ross Chastain, Dave. 
Kim time to update Kyle Larson. Four laps down as they run, pretty much three laps down to everyone except Brad Keselowski, who leads this race. Let's listen to some radio from Kyle to his crew during the stage break. It was just getting worse and worse and worse, and then it was like I didn't have a cylinder before I pitted. Is there any chance that it came out of gear from the high gear and went to a lower gear and just had a more RPM? No, it was, it was like a less RPM feeling, like just sour. Yeah, you always love a good sound effect to help diagnose things. But the curious thing here, guys, is that it's very much like what happened to them at Daytona. That was the thing that concerned Kyle the most. But he's back up to speed, now running laps within a tenth of the leader. The problem is he's laps off the pace and in nowhere close to the position to get the free pass. Marty? Boy Hendrick Motorsports guys, Chase Elliott is out. Kyle Larson down four laps. And meanwhile, for the 24 of William Byron, who is their best hope right now, sitting in fourth, listen to Brandon Lines, his spotter on the radio. Uh, let's reset his brain here. We survived the scare. Still not even halfway. Let's get uh, locked in and keep winning this damn thing. Brandon Lyons trying to encourage his driver. I just talked to Rudy Fugel, DJ, and I said, what's going on with the engine? He said, all I know is there's a pitch and a sound change. It did sound weird when it left pit road. He agreed with that. But lap time wise, they're fine right now. He's sitting in four. So would you be concerned if you were behind the wheel? Um, you know, I, I know that as a driver, what you feel and what you hear sometimes are hard to explain. But when you see these lap times, I think they just have to keep putting it to William Byron that, hey, you just keep driving, doing what you're doing. We can't do anything about if there is a problem that may surface later on. You just have to keep driving it, and if it's going to blow up, it's just going to blow up. Watching this one car down the straightaway, this thing looks like it's tracking the wrong way. Yeah. Yes. The left yep. rear is too, look at the left rear, it's to the left down the straightaway. He, he's got some kind of sort of a suspension issue where that car's tracking wrong. He's way off the pace running 3240s. Yeah, we can see him as he went down into turn one with a shot earlier that we saw that that car, he couldn't even get to the corner. He was having to baby it so much getting in there. Left rear tire's a little low on air, but I think he's got a real suspension issue. Something's coming loose. Look at that left rear tire kind of twicking around, Kim. Yeah, and Ross came on the radio and said it has so much yaw. They asked him, give us some more specificity on what it's doing. He said, it is just absolutely terrible. He said, I am so afraid to go wide open. They said, bring it to us. Let's look at it. And that's Ross Chastain making this stop right now to see what they can diagnose. Yeah, it's possible something in the rear suspension has backed out, loosened up. They're going to have to dive under there and quickly diagnose what the problem is. It looked like the lift. It looked like the left rear to me was moving inside the rear wheel. Looked that way, yeah. When he first went out on new tires and the new tires had the most grip in him, it was twitchy getting in the corner. Yeah. And that's what he was saying. I can't get close to a corner. And you saw him backing it so far up that you lose all moment. On new tires, when he should have been running 29, high 29s, he was running low 32s. Drex getting around William Byron right there in the third position. So now we got Gibbs cars in the top three. Yeah, if you didn't think that Martin Truex Jr. was going to run well here tonight, you hadn't been paying attention to him over the years at this racetrack. I know he didn't, wasn't able to make the playoffs. It's not because they haven't competed really well. They just didn't finish things off. But this man is as good as they come at this track. Right behind William Byron is Christopher Bell, the fourth gifts entry. So those cars, man, setting up for a dominant night tonight. What will be interesting to see on the 24 car and on the five car, on, on the William Byron car and on the Kyle Larson car is when you break a header a lot of times, um, you lose bottom end. You lose that power to, to, to get going on a restart. It's just a little bit. It's just sluggish. Yes, it's a different pitch, but when the racetrack is this slick and you can run this fast on new tires and you can run, you don't notice it as bad. It's just that grunt that gets you up out of the corner. So it's going to be interesting to see as we have a caution or as we go to the to the end of the stage how they restart to see if it is something in the header of tailpipes. Watching his 19 car run a 31 flat, two tenths quicker than the leader. Let's look at the 47 yeah. here. Stenhouse letting the 45 oh. go by. Ooh. Hard, hard contact. So he lets the 45 car go by and gets in this dirty, dirty racetrack. A lot of debris up there. And now he's out of the race. Took him to the garage there after that hard contact. I've heard, you know, talking to drivers. Whoa. Look at that contact there. The 12 does a little slide job. 
Jones doesn't really appreciate it too much. Going to give him a little shot. I think Blaney had had that happen to him a couple of times. So yes. he's just like, okay, this is the way everybody's going to race here tonight. I might as well join in. So he's coming up the racetrack. The 43 is just getting into the gas there. It doesn't, he's like, man, you know, I don't want, you're killing my run. I got, I'm going to throttle up. Yeah. I'm going to come off the corner. You got the spot. No need to pull up in front of me. That, that almost looked like it was a slide job and didn't mean to be a slide job. You know what I mean? He got down in there and it got up and he was out of the gas so much uh, that Eric just drove back in the back of him. And you see Brad Kozlowski passing these guys. He's yeah. came to pit road to get his tires. Yeah, so he's, he's on a one-stop strategy. Yeah, he's one, this. one lap down in 19th. Way faster car than everybody else driving, trying to get back to the lead lap here. Let's listen to the one radio. What did you do? Feel any better? Yes. Left rear drive pins are buggered up. Wow. So the left rear drive pins were messed up. Mm, wow. Looks like they might have gotten that issue fixed, and one car's on his way, but four laps down, back in 33rd place. It's going to be tough to be able to make all that up. You know, these are things that we're talking about an organization at Trackhouse that's been great this year, but these are things that happen in the playoffs, you know, that, that you don't see come up all that often, even though they've had some issues uh, the last, we'll say, 10 races, but these things happen, and they're going to rear their ugly head whenever it means the most to you, unfortunately. Kim, what you got? Well, you heard on the radio from Ross Chassain and drive pins, the specific issue, they found debris between the wheel and the drive pin, so probably damage those drive pins. Likely won't feel exactly right for the rest of the race, but Ross said it has kind of stabilized at this point. I would imagine that since they couldn't, you know, with that issue, they couldn't get the wheel tight, and that's why the, the car was walking around. Basically, the wheels yeah. loose on the race car. Now they're able to get that wheel at least firmly seated up against the hub so that now it's tight and, and, and can track straight for him. But you know you know this too as a driver. Once, once the team tells you we know what the problem is, then you can take all doubt out of your mind. You know what it is. You know that they fixed it the best they could. It may not drive the same way, but you have the confidence in the equipment to go on down in the corner and go ahead and drive it and not worry about anything breaking. So I think that's better for Ross too as we move forward. Kyle Busch continues to lead a second and a half over his teammate Denny Hamlin here at Darlington. Back to Darlington, the caution is out. Todd Gilliland has had some issues. A spin over in turn two, let's take a look. Looks like he gets against the wall, very similar to Chase Elliott earlier in the night, just gets loose, back up the racetrack. Everybody does a great job. Oh, wow. wow. Right, that's been a really a lot worse. Yeah. yeah. So there's some contact to the right rear quarter panel. And they're on pit road right now, fixing a tow link. So maybe he got into the wall a little earlier around the corner, actually damaging the tow link, making the car undrivable, which results in the spin. But here, Eric Jones, Joey Logano, Suarez, everybody gets around. This is the 12 car of Ryan Blaney, making his way through. Right on board Joey's car here. Make sure you don't come back up. Watch him coming back up. Watch him. Does a good job oh, not running the back of that 43 car. Nice. Now Eric's going to bring everybody to pit road for pit stops. Ty Gibbs is going to get the free pass. Let's go, Dave. Denny Hamlin told his crew he liked the balance that run, stayed in second place, needs to fire off just a little bit better, and was told this run will be the longest of the last three if it goes to the end of the stage, Kim. Martin Trex Jr. pits from the third position. He told his team the, the rear just lost it really quick that run. It's going to be four tires. Sunoco feel as they take a tear off, you see there, Parker. Kim, Kyle Busch may be the leader, but he said we have to work on it. I fire off fine, but then I continue to just build two loses, four tires for him, Marty. Parker's point day 49 to go here in stage two. This is going to be a long run. William Byron on the bottom of your screen seeing the car so tight. I thought it would come to me, but it just never did. Rudy Fugel said, OK, we went too far on that last adjustment. Byron gains one spot. Kyle Busch holds serve here on pit road. Kyle Busch keeps the lead off of pit road. A green flag coming back to Darlington. Welcome back to Darlington. Let's take a look at the Northern Tool and Equipment race recap. We got under green. And Daniel Suarez had to come to pit road because of some issues and was saved by the rain early in the race. He got the free pass, get himself back on the lead lap. Larson comes to pit road with some engine issues. Lost several laps doing that as well. His 
teammate Chase Elliott has some problems getting into turn one, spins the car out, collects Chase Briscoe, another playoff contender. The nine car had a lot of work to do to fix that right rear, and they were not able to do it. Ran out of time, taking his car back to the garage. Cross Chastain had some issues as well. Drive pins on the left rear. Got a little used up, but he fixed his stuff, and he's on the racetrack a few laps down. Great crowd tonight here at Darlington. Sell out here. Great crowd. Great Thanks, crowd. Been like that all year long. Just more people coming out to the races, seeing better and better crowds each week. A lot of enthusiasm around this season with the new next-gen car, and we've just seen a lot of great action on the racetrack, yeah. too. Yeah, we've seen a lot of great action, and uh, we've also seen a lot of playoff drivers having issues already here in the first race of the playoffs. Yeah. One of the things that we get to do uh, working together with Sirius yes. and NBC is we call in. Oh, I'm the guest this yeah, week? Yeah, you are. Oh, thank you. Morgan will remind Yeah, somebody will remind What, you, what are we going to talk about this week? We're going to talk about how great this race is. That's what we're going to talk about. Right now, if we were on right now, we'd be talking about Chase Elliott, uh, Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, and we'd be talking about Kyle Larson and how are they going to dig themselves out of this hole. That's going to be a big conversation. And now that we've got the crowds back at the racetracks and yeah. we're having such a great time, we did a little trackside live this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Yes, we did. Hadn't done this in a long time, man. We used oh. to do this every single race. So much, so much fun. fun. Standing out there talking to fans that are just excited to see a race. Yeah, and they stood in the rain to watch it because it rained earlier today here. And uh, they were standing in the rain listening to the crazy things we had to say. You see Jeff KB, Burton. your T-shirt. Yeah, that's my T-shirt. That's got Dale Earnhardt Jr. signed on it right there on the corner. <laughs> right there on the corner, baby. <laughs> Look good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can bring that back every single week. That was a lot of fun, man. The fans loved it. It started raining on us. Wait, after, yeah. after, after you two guys, Jeff Burton and I were out there, and it started raining. Fans never left. They just stood there, man. So we threw out some NBC hats. Uh, they wanted to know who wrote on them. I told them it was Jeff Burton. He wrote his name <laughs> on them. I don't know what he was doing. But it was it was cool. It was cool to see the fans that excited. We look at the field going down the back straightaway, and Kyle Busch chose the outside line. His teammate Denny Hamlin there. Look at that run down. You got some people that you expect to be up there, but Kevin Harvick's made a bit of a resurgence. Wasn't yeah. really running well, in the not even in the top 25 earlier. Tyler Reddick's still hanging around. Logano isn't went anywhere. Cole Custer's got a great run going. McDowell. Doesn't surprise me with Harvick. I think they knew that you know when this race was going to be won and lost, and that, that was you could lose it early by having problems and getting yeah. yourself in trouble, but you're going to win this as the track changed. Fields approaching the Geico restart zone. We're back under green here. Down the front straightaway, teammate side by side. Then he can't really give this spot up. He's got another teammate behind him, expecting him to race Kyle down into turn one. They're side by side around the middle of one and two. A lot of bobbing out there, Sparks. This is the fastest these cars have ran all night long as this surface cools off, the speeds go up. Three wide right here. We're just gonna have an all Joe Gibbs racing Front four, well, Bell had to back out and get in line there. Byron's trying to spoil that Joe Gibbs party. Off into turn one. So let's go back to William Byron and his engine sounding flat, not making the power, not doing what he wants to, and he drives around him on the outside. So obviously, whatever the issue is, it may hear, he may sound different, he may hear it different, but the car, the rear tires, he's still putting that horsepower down on the ground, and it's making it happen. Pesky teammates back here. Blaney, Logano to the inside of the 12 car. Yeah, still trying to recover from that pit stop uh, that they had that was a little bit slow on green. So working their way back up as he led the very first part of this race. And he really hasn't been able to make any ground except for that last restart. Did a good job there. Up to seventh place now, back inside the top 10. It's going to be a fight. Shifts into fifth gear, down into turn one. A little apron right here. Grabs the throttle, tries to drive up the inside of this 12 car again. So many things have to right, happen at the right time to be able to pull that pass off right yeah. now, to be able to turn down under him and still stay in the gas. Because you, you lose the front end because of the racetrack. You lose the front end because of the dirty air. And, it's, and the tires are going away. There's so many things that are 
against you making that pass at that particular place. <laughs> it was funny watching him right there. He kind of <laughs> leans forward when yeah. he shifts. Kind of bobs his head forward. You know, we can't really see his eyes because of the glare there, but you know the times we've been able to see, he just laser focused on what he's doing all the time. That car in front, his marks, that's why he's so good at what he does. He gets a lot out of this car, even when the car is not at his best. He wills this car around the racetrack. He, he wants it to go. He wants it to go where he wants it to. And he just gets up on that wheel like a kid in a go-kart, just bouncing, trying to get faster and faster. Yeah, and how about Blaney doing such a great job here? I mean, you know, just barely yeah. getting in. I'm sure when he crashed at Daytona that he thought, yep, there goes, I'm not going to be a part of the playoffs. Things worked out in his favor to do that. And now coming here, having a great that, run. That was interesting watching Joey right there. The, first, the lap before he shifted into fifth at the start-finish line, this lap, he shifted off a of turn two. Yeah. You know, changing around what he's doing there. Yeah, I've heard that, that where you shift and, and at the different places, it can actually change the handling of your car a little bit. So, you know, if you have a car that uh, is doing one thing, that shifting at different places may help that. Oh, Joey. Yeah. Up top screen there, number 12, Ryan Blaney cautions out of the racetrack. Got all the five cars around right here on the front straightaway. Little contact to the left rear. Get going, get going, get going. Keep rolling hard here. See a piece, couple of pieces come out from under it as he drives away. It's been a tough one so far. Larson just two laps down. Hit the wall if I left rear decently. hear the radio communication he feels like he hit pretty good with that left rear visually looks pretty good the left rear sounds like it's flat so i'm going slow yeah, brad keselowski took a chance there uh after that last caution took the wave around and now this caution he's able to still be on the lead lap let's take a look at this five see what happened larson right here back there and gets loose all by himself. Yeah, you don't see that from yeah. Kyle Larson. That's interesting. Slides across the racetrack, though, in front of B.J. McLeod. Light contact with the left rear. He'll get to pit road for new tires. Austin Dillon with the free pass. Everybody on the pit road, Dave. That will include second place Denny Hamlin. Yeah, only seven laps in this green flag run, but here at Darlington, the tires degrade so quickly, you don't want to get behind, and they have them to use at this point. So they'll take four here, Kim. You see Martin Trex Jr. at the top of your screen in that 19. James Small asked, do you have the car you need? He said, I'm not sure it's not bad right now. They're going to take four fresh Goodyear tires, put Snoko fuel in the car for him, Parker. Kim Kyle Bush came on radio and right as that caution came out and said, pretty good here. I like what we have. We'll just see where it goes on the longer run. Four tires for him, Marty. A little mid-race tire count update, Parker. This will give all the team six sets of tires left. William Byron saying it fired off much better as pit crew comes through for him. They gain another spot here on pit road, but that Kyle Bush team, after that rough start, Stop. At the start of the day, Junior, they have delivered the rest of the evening. Hamlin's team did not deliver. Four spots lost there. Back to sixth off of pit road. We'll be back for a green flag in a minute. This Saturday, the Fighting Irish welcome the Thundering Herd into South Bend, looking to rebound from their loss at Ohio State last night. The home opener, Marshall, at Notre Dame, Saturday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Back in Darlington. A little more offense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 10 points, and not going to get it. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell uh -oh. you what, it's been an incredible race midway through stage two, and we see it every time. We know that Darlington is tough yeah. on competitors, but I think we're surprised on who it's tough on tonight. I'm surprised. Listen, the Hendrick organization is taking a beating right now when you look at it. Um, you look at guys like Ross Chastain, guys that have been consistent, and I expected to come here and run good. When I look at the four bottom guys with, with Chase Briscoe also, the, the Chase contenders, those are guys I expected to see in the top five, the top six, the top ten, right along there. So 
Listen, they're not the last ones. This race is not over yet. There's going to be other guys in that same boat. Yeah, and I think we've seen this back through all the years. We can think about the times that this place and this Darlington Southern 500 made a difference in the championship and people battling for a championship through the years. It's just such a difficult race that it doesn't matter how good you might have been uh, and, and what you were expecting here and how good your car may be. It just seems that things crop up and happen here that maybe you don't encounter at other places. Yeah, listen, we, we all grew up in this sport and we all know that uh, when you talk to the old guys the old timers the southern 500 was the race yeah that was the race and the big names won this race that's what it was all about because they understood it they understood how to race it and they understood how to be champions here uh pretty spectacular place we see the seven car behind the pace car the coca-cola cam here as we follow the leaders around the racetrack and that is our race leader Corey Lejoy stayed on the racetrack during this last cycle he last pitted at lap 181 uh, everyone behind him with newer tires. Corey's going to restart up front, try to maintain as much track position as possible. Let's get some updates from Pit Road. So, Junior, the 11 of Denny Hamlin lost some spots on that stop, said he may have slid through just a little bit. So pit stops have been something that have cost them before. If they can get that back together, we're seeing that this 11 car is very fast again this weekend at Darlington, Marty. Boy, it has been a crazy night for Hendrick Motorsports. By far their best car has been William Byron. The engine issue, no mention of that. They've got the handling better. Now he's up here in third. Had a terrific restart on the last restart, Kim. Can he get a good one this time? Well, Marty, we talk about 500 miles being so long. What can make it longer? Temperatures. The cool suit for Tyler Reddick went out and has stopped working at the beginning of stage two. They've been giving him ice packs each of the stops. Also, nothing they do can make that car do what Tyler wants. He was reporting way too tight, Parker. And Kim, I'm not surprised to see how good Kyle Busch is here tonight. He was so confident before the race, hanging out with him. He just told me, I know I have a lot of speed inside this 18 car, but keep an eye on it on the long run. When they get past around 27 laps on those tires, that's been the weak point for this 18. They've been working on it. He's just been getting too loose. Corey LaJoy brings him around turn four for the restart. We got to be careful. Great launch for that seven car. Kyle Busch brings it back to the inside, though, in that 18 down into turn one. Those newer tires are going to be hard to hold off. Corey's going to race him, though. Almost contact down the back straightaway. Kyle Busch to the lead. That's a gutsy lap by Corey LaJoy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, man, to barrel off in that first corner on those old tires and to make it all the way to turn three, gutsy move by him. Byron and Truex back here for third down into turn one. Truex surges ahead. Here comes Ryan Blaney back there at fifth. You know, we heard Truex say yesterday during the practice and qualifying show that he was racing these guys no different. He said he didn't feel like that they raced him any different when he was in the playoff battle. So he said they're just going to have to make their way around him if they can. Great battle right here, Denny Hamlin, trying to work them spots back that he lost on pit road. Right behind uh, Suarez in the 99, continuing to move forward. Very impressive by Daniel Suarez. Watching Denny. For a guy who started with a pass through and he's, and he's up to, to seventh or eighth at this point in time, a great night for that team to recover and capitalize on everything. This he happened. came walking by us on pit road, Suarez did. He said, I'm gonna give you boys a show tonight. Yep. I've yep. never seen a driver <laughs> say anything like that before a race. He had the confidence and yes. he's making it happen. I know there's people that we used to talk about they need to start a lap down here, but I didn't, wouldn't <laughs> have thought that's what you wanted to start the playoffs with. Ooh. Oh, Daniel in the outside fence there off of turn two. Eric Jones trying to capitalize on that mistake. Let's we'll see what happened here. Oh, oh. just back. You know, that transition off of the new asphalt onto the old asphalt. You spoke about it earlier, that transition, how the car bounces, and you saw a great shot from the back, how that car bounced to the right, bounced to the left, and got into the wall and came away from it. Thing was bucking off the corner, but he yeah. got it back under speed. The you great Harry had that bump there. Yeah, the great Harry Gant would call that duping. <laughs> Whatever duping means, that's what he used to say. It would dupe off the corner right there. <laughs> He's refocused and trying to bring the battle back yeah. to Denny Hamlin there. Driving away from Eric Jones. Riding on the back of the Toyota 
camera that Denny Hamlin's carrying tonight. Sometimes when you're in a situation like that Daniel was just in, it wakes you up again to say, I need to be a little cautious. I, I need to I need to protect this car to get it to the end of the race. Because sometimes you just get on yeah. that, you just get on that momentum, man. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. And something like that happens like, oh, there's a long way to go. A I need to pace myself. Yeah, not the time. Here's an opportunity for Daniel. The seven car of LaJoy holding these guys up a little bit on older tires. But doing a really good job to stay up this far. I really thought that he would get bypassed and outside the top 10 before now. Daniel back to the inside, can't quite make the move. Settles back in behind that number 11. So you go to down the back straightaway into turn three. Dives at the bottom of the racetrack. Great battle right here. Like Joy is doing a great job of getting down into the corner and, and actually getting a little separation, which makes it making it harder for Denny to make that run. He's got to run on him now off of turn two. He's going to give him that spot. Looks in the mirror and sees that 99 card. Closing in. And another thing that Corey's doing really good is when he gets past, he's not losing time. He is not losing. You know, so many times you try to let a car around you oh. or you try to give somebody a little bit of room. And you lose time. That was that was too close for comfort right there. <laughs> Parker. As we watch for the joy with this awesome run and holding off these cars on such older tires. The team kind of pumped him up a little bit early in the race as he's been running up front here trying to hold off Eric Jones right now. And they said, don't take anything. It's all about us tonight. And that's the mentality this seven team is bringing tonight. And I think this is one of the best runs we've seen out of this team all year at a track like this and just continue to find themselves up front and using a bit of strategy up there, but obviously had some speed to keep it up there on those older tires. Yeah, he's got top 20 speed. Hopefully this track position can make, be maintained. We get the next round of cautions, get some new tires on that thing. We watched the battle down into turn one. Cedric, Bubba Wallace really tight through the middle of the corner there. They got Reddick behind them. Reddick with a big run on the two, dives to the inside, down the back straightaway on the inside here, into three. Almost clear of the two, not quite clear of the two. Reddick, Cedric on the outside, hanging right on his outside. They're right on his door. So frustrating as a driver right there. You think you've made the move and think you're going to have just enough speed to get by there. Now all of a sudden you've got yourself this battle and now you're setting up for a turn that is so hard to go off of here too wide. Oh, Ooh. contact with the outside wall. Trading a little paint there. It's going to give Harvick the opportunity to make a run on the two. And, and that's what we talked about earlier as we go back to the lead here and we see Martin Truex Jr. close in on, on Kyle Busch. But we talked about it earlier. There was, was Austin Sendrick trying to make a move as we see this one right here for the lead, and he just gives it up. He did, uh, Kyle Busch just gives it up in that corner right there. Yeah, you can, see Kyle, you can see the flames shoot out the pipes when Kyle's trying to give him the spot. But then I think Kyle got into a little bit of a dirty, a dirty yeah. part of the racetrack and really had to protect it against hitting the wall off of two. We've seen some cars get into the fence off of two. Truex with the race speed that he's had in practice, the way he's drove through this field, and now he's taking this lead. He is going to be the car to beat tonight. For sure. We've seen him just dominate races here, run really good in the old car. Back up front tonight. Martin Trex Jr. takes his Joe Gibbs Toyota to the front. Can he stay there? We'll be back. Welcome back to the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs here on USA. Telecast presented by T-Mobile. Getting late here, just a few laps left in stage two, 216 of 367 laps. Great crowd sold out in Darlington tonight. Truex Jr. driving away, almost two seconds up on Kyle Busch. William Byron back in third place. This Bass Pro Shops Toyota has been fast here before, and it was fast in practice earlier this year. Finished in top five in both stages. Got swept up in an accident. 
about Daniel Suarez here again? He's gone back by Denny Hamlin after that little issue there where Hamlin got by him and Daniel got into the wall a little bit. Now starting to run Ryan Blaney down. If he can get in here, run in the top five, even if he finishes six, to yes. come back from what he had to and be up here uh, almost in the top five, gathering points uh, here in stage two, possibly. Let's take a look and see who's on the move. Power moves are brought to you by the Propane Education and Research Council. Suarez, Corey LaJoy up 23 spots. Cole Custer, we mentioned him a few times, up 17, having a great run. Truex didn't qualify well, lots of speed in that car. Great battle right here, Eric Jones. Denny Hamlin, guys, we you know, saw him yeah. running in second place. Looked like he had the best car, hounding Kyle Busch for the lead. Now he's lost a few spots on pit road. We got a spin. Cody Ware now on the apron of the racetrack, brings out the caution. This is the sixth caution of the night. He had a career yeah, best finish last okay. week at Daytona in the top 10. Hmm. What do the crews do now? Yeah, with just a few laps left in this stage, and you see that 51 car just coming around on him. Coming to 11 laps to go in the stage. Some right. guys will take this opportunity to come to pit road, get those new tires, try to take advantage of few laps Wonder. we have left. If you do that yeah. and you come in, which I understand, but they've already used up quite yeah. a few sets here in the, just in this stage. We know the third stage is longer yet. Um, but do they come now this time and then stay out there as we uh, restart for stage three? This caution will give Eric Almirola the free pass, the only car lap down back in 21st position. Kyle Larson is in 22nd, two laps down. So you guys are trying to figure out what they're going to do on the pits, and this is why it's bad to have three drivers in the booth. Okay? <laughs> because I don't have a clue. A driver is screaming, give me tires, yes. give me tires, yeah. give me tires. That, that, that's what you're always going to scream no matter what. It is going to be interesting to see how they play out these last 12 laps. What this will do, I mean, some guys will stay on the racetrack maybe to, to finish this out, but what this will do is split the, split the field up yeah. into two different strategies, where right now everybody's pretty much on the same, same schedule. Well, this will split it up present some challenges for some of these guys who have dominated. It's only 21 laps on the tires they have now. Yeah, you wonder if, if people back there, especially uh, like Harvick and Sendrick and Keselowski, Austin Dillon right. back there in 20th, they take this opportunity, if they see the others not, uh, to possibly come. That's right. So it's 26 laps since the last pit, but that's 21 green flag laps for like Truex, Kyle Busch, William Byron, is that, you know, is that enough for them to consider saving a set of tires for that last stage? See a lot of guys getting ready to get up on the wall there. The 19 teams got their tires ready. Looks like they're going to come to pit road. Sometimes, though, these teams, they'll set up a fake. Yeah. Tell you, man, get up there and look like you're ready. I think they're all coming. <laughs> I think they're all coming, too, man. I don't think this is a fake. Here they come. Man, he drove them all the way to the he box sure right there. Dave, what you got? Oh, Ryan Blaney, and he'll take on four tires here. The car was the best it's been on that run, so it doesn't want him to change much there. Just the four tires, and he gave up six potential stage points to do it, Kim. Peter Martin Trex Jr. has no complaints about his Toyota. In fact, he told his team in clean air, it is insanely good. Makes that stop right there. It's going to be four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel, Parker. Well, for the 18 at Kyle Busch, those are not four sticker tires that they're putting on. Those are four scuffs as we talk about these teams trying to be conscious of their sets of tires. You see there, Marty. Yeah, good move by everybody. Five sets left to play with here. So all the teams bringing their car down to pit road. William Byron was in third there. He said, we have more speed, but I'm still too tight and I cannot turn like the 18 and the 19, but they will lose a host of spots here on pit road for the 24. A lot of troubles tonight for the Hendrick team. Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, all those guys struggling to get through this evening, but not the Gibbs boys. Introducing the all-new two for $5 menu at Sonic. Choose two classics, the Frito Chili Cheese Wrap, the Small Jumbo Popcorn Chicken, or a quarter pound double cheeseburger. For just five bucks, the two for five dollar menu only at Sonic or in the app. Welcome back to Darlington. Under caution, everybody came to pit road. This has presented a great opportunity for the cars that are multiple laps down to be able to get the wave around. All right, so a lot of guys have taken the wave around. One of them, very important, 
Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson has taken the wave around. This puts him one lap down. Several other cars are one lap down as well. Justin Haley, Hemrick, Castle. If this five car can beat all of those guys in this short run to the end of the stage, he will then get the free pass. This puts the five car on the lead lap after being up, up, up to four laps down earlier yeah. in this race. Just it, incredible. That is, oh. it, and it's a long third it's a stage. Long, yes. It's cra that is crazy. He was 35th or 36th at one point in time in this race when, when you looked at it. And now he's on the verge of being back in the lead lap and back in contention. Carl Edwards won here in 2015 after being down two laps. This will be unprecedented for this five team. Just to even come out of here with a top 10 finish, I think they'd be thrilled with that. Right on the pace cam, Coca-Cola pace cam here as these guys cruise around turn three and four. You see the two guys on the front row, Kyle Busch, Martin Trix Jr. Suarez back there in row two, still climbing. Closing in for the Geico restart zone. Seven laps to go to finish stage two. There's some critical stage points up for grabs. Back up to green. Look at that freight train down into turn one. Sparks flying, cars out of shape. Almost three wide. Eric Jones thinks. Thought about it. Yeah, he did. I look at Suarez drive in, trying to get in front of Christopher Bell. Think he's going to be able to make that pass. Battle still up front for the lead. Truex, not a playoff contender, racing his teammate who is for the lead. I think Kyle Busch is going to win the spot here off the of turn two. When you sit at home, if you don't think points are important, these stage points are important. <laughs> You watch these last five or six laps because these guys are driving like it's the last lap of this race. Side by side back here between Bell and Suarez for fourth place. They're swapping it back and forth. Byron closing in on that. Logano behind him. Slamming Ooh. into turn one. Oh. Oh. Three up Logano in heat sideways. More contact. Byron all the way to the bottom. Again, these are for stage points, people. This is just for stage points, but that's how critical they are for these championship contenders. Look at Logano take that spot. I mean, he came from four cars back to make that move. And just muscled his way into it. Just willed that car to get around him. Bad set of corners for Suarez, who's fallen all the way back to a battle for eighth place with Jones. Byron coming around the outside here, Christopher Bell. Gonna fight to take that spot back. Alex Bowman. In seventh place, makes a move to the inside of the 20 car down the back straightaway for sixth. Kyle Busch, Truex back up front. Three laps to go in the stage. What does Truex do? I mean, you, you know, if you're, if it's any other race, he's going to race to try to pass this 18 car. But considering this is a playoff race, a playoff point up for grabs for this 18 of Kyle Busch. Yeah. The bottom is the free pass race. The five car of Kyle Larson ahead of the 16 of Hemrick. Kyle wants to maintain that position to be able to get himself back on the lead lap at the end of the stage. Yeah, and he's doing this with a car that is not driving well. We saw him spin out all on his own. You can see that he's really struggling through turns three and four, a lot better down in one and two. Fans are waving this 19 car by, hoping he can take the lead. We're looking out of, the, out of the box here, right down across the grandstands. The fans are on their feet for the finish of stage two. It, it, two teammates battling for the end of the stage. Once again, it's more important for Kyle Busch. This point is important oh, for yeah. Kyle Busch. He, he, he needs this. There's not a person sitting no. on the front straightaway right now. Final lap of stage two. Looks like Kyle Busch has it under control. Down into turn three. Truex on the bottom, wrapping around next to the apron. Close to the gap. Not close enough. Not quite enough. Kyle Busch is going to be your stage two winner here in Darlington. Third stage win of the year. Two of those have came in the last two races. That 18 car getting hot. 
Kyle Larson will yep. come by the start finish line. Wow. Wow, man. In a very short period of time, he goes from two down to back even. Some incredible racing there in those final few laps, trying to get to the end of stage two. Christopher Bell, Suarez, all these guys, they survive it. We're gonna have a heck of a race in stage three coming up after the break. Coming up next, following our Cup Series playoff coverage here on USA, the new NASCAR docu-series, Race for the Championship. Everybody's talking about this. Yeah. The first volume has been out and everybody just loved it. Can't wait to see all the rest of them. Look at the moon, man. Great night tonight. All, all the cars are coming down to pit road. Dave, what you got? Eight points for Ryan Blaney, stage points that is, as he comes to pit road now. He'll take on four. He says I need to be just a little bit tighter at the front end of the run so that I can defend. Kim? After that little sprint to the end of stage two, the team asked Martin Truex Jr., anything we can do better if we get a short run at the end of this race? Martin said, not sure. There's still so much racing to do. It's going to be four tires and fuel for the 19, Parker. Kyle Busch won that stage, but he was constantly comparing his car to his teammate, the 19 of Martin Truex Jr., saying he could just go so much further into turn one, Marty. Terrific look at Joey Logano's pit stop, who's glad the stage was not longer. He said that contact with the wall was pretty hard. The balance really, really close for Logano. A drag race off pit road with his teammate Ryan Blaney. Logano actually gains two spots right there. That pit stall number one paying off for the 22. Man, I'm telling you, it's a great pit stall, and it's brought him right back into this race after losing so much so much time earlier. He was out front early in this race, lost track yeah. position on pit road, gaining it back with that number one stall. And you brought it up in the meeting. That yep. number one stall was going to be critical, could put him in the position to win this thing at the end. We've seen every time he comes in, he picks up two or three. You know, guys, though, Martin Truex Jr. might break a lot of people's hearts here tonight <laughs> whenever he goes True. and takes this race and wins and somebody that was right there ready to, to move themselves on into the round of 12 might not happen. Yeah. This is a long, long, tough race, one of the hardest races the drivers run throughout the year, and I think this is when we get into that mental toughness oh, yeah, part of sure. the night. What, what is it going to be like for these guys these last 100 miles? Well, you're just going to have to stay focused on what you're doing. And I think by breaking up this, the way that these guys are doing it, where they're running 35 to 40 laps, and that number will change a little yeah. bit as we get into stage three, that helps you because you get a little bit of a break instead of having to run on those old tires quite as much. Yeah, for, for these guys that if, if you've ever run a marathon or you're distance runners, don't look at the scoreboard. Don't pay any attention to how many miles are left. Do your job, stay focused, and it's really tough. Race the car in front of you, race the racetrack, you're going to be good. We've seen guys like Dale Jarrett, they can do it multiple times down here. They've got, four, how many wins you got, five? I don't know, not as many as Jeff Burton. Yeah, it's all and, right. And uh, <laughs> Jeff Gordon, they need to be named Jeff. Well, I wish we could keep going, guys. Yeah. It's so much yeah. fun working in the booth with y'all. I've loved working with y'all on the NBC coverage through, throughout the years, and we'll do this again next year. Same time next year. I look forward to it. You Thanks, got it, a lot man. of fun. Thank you, man. Let's send it over to the booth to Rick and Steve, guys. What have you guys been watching while you've been having your snacks in stage two? <laughs> we did enjoy a little bit of food, and we definitely enjoyed it when we've got a Petty and Earnhardt and a Jared in the booth. It always brings back great memories, and that was a lot of fun. But, Steve, I think the turn of events has to be uh, you look at Hendrick Motorsports and what looked like a, a devastating day, uh, starting off with Larson going so many laps down, and then Chase Elliott had issues. Now, all of a sudden, you've got three potential Hendrick Motorsports cars that will be fighting for the lead here. Yeah, Chase's accident was terminal. He didn't get any chance to continue. But the five of Kyle Larson, this mysterious issue, we're not sure what it was. We'll probably hear about it this week. But four laps down. Now all the way back to the lead lap with getting the free pass in this situation right here. Uh, you know, if they are lucky enough to continue on through the playoffs, they're going to look back at this race and what transpired and how they got back. This could be a big moment for the five car. But it isn't just the five. I mean, look at that race right there. I didn't see a bunch of guys worried about saving their car. Joey Logano's bouncing pe off people. The racing is super intense. Right. And they mentioned it. This final stage, 
Um, I think they're going to try to eat it in smaller spoonfuls, right? 30 or 35 laps, come to pit road and keep doing it that way. That does help that driver, that mental focus they talked about. And Joe Gibbs Racing has been dominant as well. All right, Junior, it looks like you've got a, uh, a recognizable soul standing <laughs> next to you once again up there in the booth. Yeah, we finally got Jeff back, and, and he's had some success here. I love kind of leaning on him at racetracks where I know he's really good at. And so what have you been watching in stage two? I know we were together in stage one, and then a lot of things started changing. Larson's back in this thing. Joe Gibbs guys are dominating. It, though. Yeah, they've dominated, but now the Penske guys, they've started to show to get themselves to the front. Uh, Blaney and, and Logano, both are running well. I think we're going to see a teammate battle coming down, but I think ultimately someone is going to make a mistake getting on pit road. All these green flag stops, we see it all the time here. They've got to stay on point. It's such a difficult pit road to get on. Another driver trying to recover. Ross Chastain had that issue with the drive pins, pitted a couple times on the green. He took the wave right here to get to one lap down. Old tires, but at some point, you have to gamble. You have to make up for the issues. We'll see if he can get as lucky as Larson did with the yellows. Yeah, he's got to get by a few guys like Hemrick Haley, Ty Dillon, Harrison Burton, but it's a possibility. Getting ready to start the final stage here at the Southern 500 from Darlington Raceway. And once again, the fans all on their feet. And the green flag is back in the air. Very close for second. Martrex Jr. doesn't want to give the spot up. Logano takes it. Joey Logano has gotten stronger and stronger as this race has gone on. We saw him early in the race very fast. Struggling on long runs, but I think they've made that car better. Suarez still in the picture Whoa, running contact fourth. Back there. A and couple different issues with contact. The 99 of Suarez, Blaney. We saw Alex Bowman's car out of shape off a of four. With the four of Harvick. These guys have been running in these cars a long time. They're hot, they're frustrated. It's going to take much contact to really get these guys boiling over. Alex Bowman, though, man, he's making a run here late in this race, right under this 20 car of Christopher Bell. He's had some good runs at Darlington in the past. It's been a it's been a really, really tough stretch, though, for this crew. Bell did not get him that spot. Entered side by side into one. It's so tight. Almost contact. <laughs> that was awesome. Not giving an inch. As they go back at it again, Bowman a little bit lower on the racetrack, almost down to the apron. He's on it. That's gutsy, man. And he's going to clear the 20 off the corner, jump right in front of him, take away his momentum. Christopher Bell had the speed. Alex takes the line away, but takes the position as well, off into turn one. They mentioned Alex Bowman. They've gotten better throughout this race. Struggled early. Also, see that car, that four car back there. He is the same way. 20 car Bell making another run. Watch this action right here. Just a lot of contact. Guys getting into the back of each other. Restarts are aggressive. Kyle Busch up front, Logano running in that second spot. Then it's Martin Trucks Jr., Daniel Suarez, William Byron all in the top five. Kim. And Alex Bowman starting to show up late in the race. I talked to crew chief Greg Ives earlier in the day, and he said because of the bad summer stretch they had, they feel like they are considered the underdog, and they want to prove that underdogs can win. Use that kind of moniker to their advantage. Right now, Alex telling the team he's pretty good. Just when he gets in traffic is where he gets into trouble, currently running in the seventh position. Pretty interesting listening to some of Alex Bowman's comments before this race, saying that so many people just doubted his ability. And the only thing he does is win races and makes a habit out of people being derogatory toward him about how he can drive a race car. But he's a winner. He's winning an awful lot of times. This is his fifth playoff appearance. And he wants to use that as motivation. Marty. Jeff, welcome back to the top five. Joey Logano, think about how their day started in stage one. First stop of the day, came in second. They fell back to 11th after a problem with the jack. They spent their entire day trying to get this track position back. So what did Joey think earlier when he was back in traffic? Listen. Uh, tight traffic. 
I fire off pretty good. I just start getting tight fairly quick, dirty air. I fire off better than majority. He went on to say, we are terrible compared to everybody else in traffic. But Steve, Paul Wolf got down after that pit stop when they gained two spots here, high-fived all of his guys. You get a good pit stop like that, put you back in the game. That's where Joey Logano is right now in second. Finally, has that clean air. He's won it all night. Well, listen, if you're terrible in traffic, the best thing the picker can do is get you out of traffic. He's in second, you know, gonna have a couple shots. If they're under green, the first pit stall is not a big advantage. Really no advantage at all. But under yellow, that's when that first pit stall really matters. We'll just have to see how these last 123 laps play out. And Steve, you said they're gonna chip up this, this final stage a little bit shorter than they had in the first two stages. Yeah, so basically your options are to pit a couple times, break it up into three runs, two pit stops. We see Truex work underneath the 22. The 22 should keep momentum off the top, he does. Uh, that's going to be like 43, 4, 5 laps per run. If you're going to pit three times, though, you can all the way down to, you know, probably mid to low 30s per run. So it's just a math equation. We'll, uh, we'll see how it works out. I'll let you take care of all the math on that one. As we see Kyle Busch still holding off Logano. He has a six-tenth of a second lead over him. But the fight there that we're looking at, Logano and Truex, those two separated by three tenths of a second, just a little bit behind them, is Daniel Suarez. Parker. Right, Rick, and he continues his march forward with this great run by this 99 team, but it's even better considering that they just were put in the wall at the end of stage two by Chris Rebell, and Daniel Suarez was not happy. Take a listen on the radio. Oh, that's when they call about up your box over here. Yeah, copy. Switching car is apologizing right now, getting his hand out, but somebody, oh, man, I mean, they, they're really so stupid. Somebody, oh. Anyway, I want to use that car when I, whenever I need. Yep, the more. It's in the back of his head now. You clear it out of yours. They also remind him to maybe uh, push that 20 car about 15 miles per hour too fast into the corner if he gets to him because they were just not happy the way they've been raised. And not think about their day where they had the penalty drive through their lap down. They come back to that drive to the field, get put in the wall. Obviously, this team will upset, but they've been reminding Daniel the bigger picture, all the other playoff cars that had issues and told him to continue to race smart right now in the top five running great. So, Parker, I think that's great advice to him. He said, hey, they said, listen, you're now in his head, you get it out of yours. And that's great advice, especially at this racetrack. Do not beat yourself. Don't let your competition get into your head and force you into a mistake that you don't need to make. This track's difficult enough. Don't make it even more difficult. Let's talk about how this 99 car makes the pass on the 19. He's running Truex down. Runs into the corner, just a little offset. Gonna try to turn the car down across the bottom into clean air. Try to drive up off the corner quicker. Gonna lose momentum down the straightaway, running the bottom on exit. And remember what a day it has been already, actually weekend for Daniel Suarez after failing tech inspection three times. They had to start in the back. They weren't able to qualify. They started in the back. They've worked their way up front and now still contending for this top five position running in the fourth spot. Let's listen in on what's going on with Tyler Reddick. All right, let's stop crying wolf here and get our shit back together. We're racing ourselves. Like I said earlier, the four is not going to finish where he's running right now. I guarantee you he's going to run somewhere up around the top five. We're racing ourselves. Be smart. That's all we need to worry about. Don't overdo the shit. Get into the pit box. Just let the picker guys do their deal. Everybody just stay focused. We're fine. We've got a long way to go. Let's race. We're fine. <laughs> there you have it. Hey, listen, it's the Southern 500. It's the start of the playoffs. But the information coming to him about Harvick was, look, Kevin Harvick's not running that great either. Kevin Harvick's had issues. Look at where he's running. He's going to methodically make this work. Ross Chastain on pit road with another problem. But that's what, that was great information to him as well. Kevin Harvick will find a way we need to. Look at this shot right here, Rick. Wow. Right against the wall. All right, so this is, that's exiting. I try to get my corner straight at this turn two. Now we're down into three. There's the building right up against the fence. Listen to the throttle. Closes this would be a great gap. shot on this pass, Junior. He closes the gap right there. Three hours into this race, there's still an hour to go. And these drivers are, well, they're hearing the pep talks a little bit. Saying, hey, let's get focused, refocus. We've got 
100 laps to go, 115 laps to go. Let's get after this thing. Let's watch right here and see him turn that car back down across the racetrack and see if he does it. No, he runs the wall this time. Right in front of him is the four of Kevin Harvick. He's trying to set up for a pass there. Right behind him, Denny Hamlin, who's continuing to have a hard time making up that lost track position on pit road. And yes, that camera was as close to the wall as it looked, as we see Tyler Reddick away from the shot, just right against the wall. Junior has grip. If you can get the courage and have the discipline to run right there all night, when you get about two inches from that wall, it's like a buffer. It's like an air buffer that kind of helps you from getting into it, but only if you time it right. If you just drive in the corner and run up to the wall, that air buffer isn't going to do anything to help you. But if you can walk up to it slowly, it really does help. Yeah, basically all the air going down the side of the car, going wrapping around the nose and going down the right side of the car, it compresses against the wall. And it gives you a little bit of a cushion, a bit of a buffer, and, and you can add, actually add more throttle uh, to, to get through the corner faster. The guys do this at Darlington, Homestead, all types of racetracks. We'll do it next week in Kansas. A lot of fun. Harvick running in the ninth spot. Reddick trying to take it away. Kyle Busch out front. It's NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Darlington. This telecast presented by T-Mobile as Kyle Busch has about an eight-tenth of a second lead over Joey Logano. Then Martin Truex Jr., Suarez, and Byron are the top five. Blaney, Bowman, Bell, Harvick, and Hamlin the top ten. Reddick just outside of the top ten, running in that 11th spot. Austin Dillon is 17th, one of the other playoff drivers. Austin Cindric 19th and Kyle Larson who is back on the lead lap running in the 21st position. Chastain is two laps down as is Briscoe and Chase Elliott currently out of the race. A lot of conversations about how you run this final run Rick. So the simple math is this if you're going to stop a couple times you're going to run probably 19 more laps pit around lap 280. If you're going to stop three times though you're only about eight laps away from your first pit stop. So. Uh, risk first reward right look more pit stops fresher tires more grip car handles better risk you're going to be a lap down at different situations 
The other risk is if we get a bunch of yellows late, you might run out of tires. Only stopping twice, a little more conservative. You might give up some time on the racetrack, but you're, you're not a lap down, which I prefer. I'd probably lean towards the two stop. But then again, I got my lunch handed to me by Greg Biffle here one day, who pitted a lap before us. So, I mean, this place makes you, as a crew chief, just scratch your head on how to do it. It's going to be interesting. I think the, the, the top 17 or 18 are going to do it different. It's going to be fun to see what all these crew chiefs decide with so much on the line. These two continue to fight for the second spot. Logano has it. Mark Trex Jr. putting the pressure on now. You talked about a little bit ago how the guy, when he runs him down, how difficult it is to pass. This is a racetrack where your car likes a certain line, and if the car in front of you takes that line away, it really hurts you. It hurts the aerodynamics on the car. Not really anywhere to go. A few different ways you can run this racetrack, but it's just hard to move around enough to get clean air. Let's get a few updates as we have just over 100 laps to go. We'll start with Parker. Rick, and for Kyle Busch, he's led 116 laps so far in this race, but this is the part of the run they've been most worried about. He and Ben, ben Bayshore have been working on making this car run better past lap 25 in a run because they have great fire off speed. He said, that's not what I need fixed. I need the run to continue not to lose the rear end and get too loose towards the end of the runs. That's what they've been working on. So far in this run, it's looking like they might have found what they needed, Marty. Joy Logano sitting in second, being told Kyle Busch is beating him on power down. We ride on board with a Coca-Cola onboard camera for Logano. Originally this morning, Paul Wolf wanted to do three stops here in stage three, but they only have three sets of stickers left. That would put them in a bad spot. Looks like they're going to try and make it a two-stopper here in stage three, Kim. Well, I talked to James Small, crew chief for Martin Truex Jr. this morning, and he said, we're going to go out here to prove a point, and that means stealing wins during the playoffs. We're going to make sure people do not forget about us, even though we aren't in the championship hunt. Truex just really needs clean air for that car to perform at its peak, currently running P3, Parker. And Kim, the 99 car of Daniel Suarez, this team came in with so much confidence to his first playoff race, saying we are a top five team and we know it and we're going to show it even with the penalty. So far they have, but just recently he came on the radio and said, I just hit the wall pretty hard and now lacking a lot of grip in that 99 car, guys. And here you, yeah, I was going to say, Rick, here comes Austin Dillon down pit road. They're going to take on four fresh Goodyear tires here. So I'm thinking Justin Alexander, Steve, is thinking, hey, this is my only shot here. They have three sets of sticker tires left, so they're going to take it here. That's going to make it a three-stop stage three for the three, three car. Kim? And Tyler Reddick is going to make his stop. He was reporting that he lost all rear lateral grip. Also, tight across the front, so double issues for that car. Remember that pep talk, they're just continuing to remind them, be smart for tires fuel, Marty. So Kim, an interesting move here. Austin Sindrick coming down pit road. He spent much of his day around top 15. At the end of stage two, Jeremy Bowens made the call to put on scuff tires. So they actually have four sets left here in the two. You see that big wedge adjustment, so that could be a big advantage for the two later on in the race. So we see some trickle in, but unlike earlier where we saw 25 cars in one lap window, you can see there's a little apprehension, a little decision making. Are we stopping twice? Are we stopping three times? I believe we're going to see the majority stop twice, save those fresh tires for those late yellows. But the RCR team, the information they have says opposite. We'll kind of just have to track this as we go. As we see Kyle Busch now was going to blend right behind that 10 car, that 10 though. You want to see what new tires look like? There you go. This 10 is going to drive away from the race leader like he is stuck. That is why you come an extra set. Brand new shoes, Rick. They feel good at this place. True eggs. Make some good laps here. And the 22 car still struggling with that long run speed. <laughs> I laugh because everybody keeps trickling in a little bit at a time. Parker. Oh, guys, potential issue here for Coyle Joy in this great run for the 7 Spire Motorsports. He came on the radio and said we may be having fuel pump issues. He slowed dramatically on the racetrack, so now they're on pit road. They're changing the tires. They're going to go away. But with saying he's having issues, he lost a couple seconds that last lap before he pitted. We'll see how it works out. Joey Logano on pit road now. You see on the left-hand side some other cars. Suarez on pit road. We'll keep an eye on that 7 as he rejoins the racetrack to see if the fuel issue continues. Parker. 
Right, as we said, Daniel Suarez struggling with the rear grip in this race car, especially through turns one and two, He's having a great run inside the top five. You can see that scuff on the right rear. That was from just getting in the wall. Most recently, once again, as you see, they're going to do four tires and fill it full of fuel for Daniel Suarez. He leads his leaders down pit road, Marty. Look at the view of the south for Joey Logano. Pit stall number one. Paul Wolf making this call, so it's a little bit earlier than it would be if they were going to do it in two stops. They, too, here going three stops in this stage, Steve, and they only have three sets of tickers tires left so some teams rolling the dice doing everything they can to get the win here at Darlington. And Marty I think Jonathan Hassel the crew chief for Ryan Blaney wanted to do the two stop strategy but Ryan came on the last few laps just saying how loose the car had gotten. I have to come to pit road. He said OK bring it. Strategy change. Marty. William Byron hitting his pit stall here. All the team seeing that lap time turned by the guys out there with fresh Goodyear tires. Byron saying the car has been pretty good. Turns down the hill very nicely for him. So these fresh Tires going to help everybody, Kim. Greg Ives, crew chief for Alex Bowman, told me this morning they just need to have a really solid day. He said they're looking for base hits right now, not home runs. So don't overdo it. They're reminding Alex to be patient, as you see right there. Tires going on. Four tires to no go fuel for Alex Bowman, Parker. Mr. Bell on pit road here going really loose inside that 20 car. He had fallen out of the top five towards the back end of the top 10. It's four good year tires you see there and filling full of Snoko fuel. It's open. He can tighten it up, Dave. And now Kyle Larson, who had restarted in 22nd, had not made up a lot of ground. Four cars blowing up to pit road. Four cars blowing up on the front straightaway. Down into turn one. Kevin Harvey. My rocker panel's on fire. Yeah, big flames coming out from underneath the hood of Harvick. So he's got no motor issue. It's a it's rubber buildup underneath the race car has caught on fire. And he's trying to get out of that as quickly as he can. Yeah, there's more than that. Caution is out. Here. And that car bursts into flames. My goodness, look at this fire. Great call by Kevin Harvick stopping and getting out. This thing is just a blaze. What's odd about it, Steve, is there's fire coming out of both sides of the car. We've seen yeah. some exhaust box fires, but it's coming out of the left side as well. So to your point, Junior, that's why I thought it was an engine issue because the left side is, is out really what it looks to me like the end of the exhaust pipe, like the engine had exploded. Right. Look at what it looks like inside. We've seen a couple issues this year with, with like you say, with rock with you know rocker panels catching on fire because of contact and so forth. The exhaust heat catching that on fire. And I was thinking about how this race, being a, an abrasive racetrack, a lot of rubber build up. Rubber going into places we maybe not used to having rubber go, right, on these race cars and getting getting packed and collecting in 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 places. That also can catch fire, so you see the fire on the right side. Yeah, it's only out of the right side on the track. There's nothing on the left. But he's slow, right? So we, we you know, he's getting passed right there into the corner. And then there's smoke coming out of the back. More and more smoke. The fire is getting worse. Driver's starting to realize that he needs to get out of this situation. Yeah, look inside the cockpit of that thing. So he's just trying to ease down the racetrack to get out of harm's way. There's parts of debris and all kinds of things flying off the racetrack, maybe coming from the race car. And, 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 and this, another playoff driver, but also, Steve, this came right in the middle of pit sequences. This is going to mix the field up. Yeah, it's a huge break for the leaders who hadn't pit, Kyle Busch, Martin Trex Jr., and Hamlin. Um, the, the eight of Reddick, as we see another view of this, the eight of Reddick's going to be the free pass. We're going to have to just let it cycle Outside out here because a bunch of guys going to take a wave around. Right um, there, there's no engine. You know, the motor's not running down the front straight away. Come on, keep coming, though. You're okay to keep coming. You're okay to keep coming. Goodness. Yellow's out here. It's just unbelievable. Uh, to your point, Junior, the thing on the right side, we've kind of seen before, the left out the pipes is a new, that's a new one for me. The fire inside the car is just, that's just got to get fixed. I mean, it's, even if a motor blows up, we should not have what's going on inside the car right now. So the four of Kevin Harvick, another, 
playoff driver that has issues in this first playoff race from Darlington. All right, as we've mentioned, we've seen this issue before, so let's take another look at our Toyota virtual car. It's going to be a little bit busy. Let's talk about back in Indianapolis. Busher, contact, makes contact on the right side. It ends up moving the exhaust later in this race. This is the really first one we saw. Look at this fire. It looks a lot like Kevin Harvick's fire blazing out of the right side of Busher's car. So let's go on to our virtual car and take a look at what happened. So the exhaust on this car, dual exhaust, out both sides, and it comes out about a third of the way down the door. You see it right there. Well, it's protected underneath this carbon area. That's that rocker panel that Kevin Harvick talked about. But what happened in Chris Busher's situation is when a car made contact with it, everything bent back. And then the body popped back out. The exhaust didn't. So right here, the exhaust can blast on the carbon fiber. Things can catch on fire. So after Indianapolis, NASCAR came in. They added a piece right here to the shroud to keep the exhaust attached to the side. That is what fixed the issue that Busher had. The problem is we've now seen another fire at Richmond and now a fire here. So you saw that other carbon piece that went on there, that gray piece that went in before the foam. There's also some conversation that that has some heat shielding on it. What you stick, what you actually use for glue to put the heat shielding on could possibly be flammable. And really anything, even if it says it's non-flammable, if it breaks and falls down, and lays on a 1,000 degree yep. exhaust pipe long enough, it is going to start to smolder. Now listen, that wasn't smoldering on the four car, that was a bomb fire. So something in there had some sort of accelerant, you know, the foam melts, it doesn't really burn. The carbon can catch fire, but this is a challenge for the teams and NASCAR. No one likes to see this, but it seems like each one is just a little bit different. Yeah, I think to, your, to, to our point, or to your point that this, this, this could be an engine failure, that created this yeah. issue for the four, but we still have a fire issue in terms of flammable uh, problems with this car that need to be worked out. And look, look, we're at race 27. I think none of us expected for this car to just be perfect and nothing have to change through year one. Racing's been great on the racetrack. I think there's some conversation about some other adjustments to this car. I think this is on the list, Dale, right? We're gonna see some evolution. We had decades and decades and decades of the old style race car. 27 races in. There are absolutely things that need to be adjusted, but and this fire is one big one. What is going on? Yeah, the key is figuring out what exactly happened in this situation. Did did an engine break and oil get into the car somehow or something else? We don't know what happened. This one looked a little different than the others, and until they do an investigation and truly understand what happened with this four car, we'll hear from Kevin soon to understand if the thing if the engine blew up then we'll understand that, and that'll lead us down a direction, but just look different than the others. Well, and the interesting point is, so they've all been Fords, whether that's something different on the Fords, I don't know. And the Indy one, I think, was diagnosed and adjusted. Richmond in here, these are the two most abrasive tracks we run, so is it like just the rubber that builds up? Does it get up into that rocker panel and catch fire? I don't think we know. I think we'll find out as we go. With 88 to go, though, you see the cars on the left-hand side, that 46 laps since the last time they came to pit road from Ty Gibbs in eighth, all the way up to Kyle Busch in first. This will be a first, uh, caution flag pit stop for this group. Great break for them, Dave. Too tight for Denny Hamlin, lost a lot of front grip. Coming in third, he needs an adjustment for that. They've kind of had a couple of bad stops. They've had a couple of really good stops as well with the 11 team. We'll see what they got here, Kim. Martin Truex Jr. in the middle of your screen told his team he burned the tires off following the 22 too long. The wheels shaking, the front tires are shaking just way too loose. He said we're in front, we would be long gone. So track position is what Martin really is wanting. Four tires, Sunoco Fuel, Parker. And Kim from Kyle Busch, he was about a lap, maybe two away from getting there under greens. You see the four tires in this pick through has been on it and once again will lead him, get him the lead off of pit road. But they were so close there when that caution happened for the four and they were able to stay out there and pit under yellow. A lot of things going to be shooken up. Or a lot of issues will be for the drivers that had come to pit road. There were 13 that were one lap down, and through that cycle, the 99 and the 17 too fast on pit road. Back at Darlington Raceway, about to be 85 laps to go here in the race. Kevin Harvick has made his way to the garage area. Man, that looked like a scary fire. Any idea what led to that, Kevin? I'm sure it's just the crappy parts on the race car like we've seen so many times. We haven't fixed anything. It's kind of like the safety stuff. We just let it keep going and keep going, and the car started burning. 
um, and as it burned, you know, it, the flame started coming through the dash, and I ran a couple laps, and then, you know, as the flame got bigger, and then it started burning stuff up, and I think right there you see all the all the brake fluid that was probably coming out of the brakes. It burned the brake line, but the, the fire was coming through the dash. So That's scary. What, what a disaster, man. No, no reason. We didn't touch the wall, we didn't touch the car, and, and here we are in the pits with a burned up car and can't finish the race during the playoffs because of crappy ass parts. So to clarify, it was not an engine issue originally. It was a rocker panel fire. Because I, I just stopped. The rocker was on fire for yeah. a couple laps. I just stopped because, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't see anymore because the flames were coming through the dash and I couldn't make myself sit in there and burn up. Glad you're okay. Kevin Harvick is uh, okay in the garage area, but not very happy. And uh, wants to have a chat with some NASCAR officials. Yeah, well, there you have it. We, we, we didn't know if it was an engine failure or not, but Harvick said there was no engine failure. And this is a problem that has got to get fixed. I know they're working on it, but you know, you got a driver in the playoffs that's out of the playoffs. Not only that, it's dangerous. It has to get addressed and it has to get fixed. Getting ready for the restart of the cookout. Southern 500 from here at Darlington. Now just 84 laps to go. Teammates fighting for the lead up front. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin. Right behind him, Martin Truex Jr. in that third spot. And a big run by the 19 up against the wall. We'll see if he can clear the 11. And Martin Truex Jr. is going to take second away. Eric Jones close. Right there, right there in fourth place behind that 11. Michael McDowell also up here in the 34. Blue and green thir uh, 43 car down the back straightaway. This caution in the middle of that cycle really swapped it up. Not for Kyle Busch, Truex, or Hamlin. Worked well for them, but you guys have given the names. Jones, McDowell, Wallace, Gibbs. Great break for those cars. Some of the other playoff cars kind of stuck there. Eighth through 18th. Reddick all the way back to Dillon. Harrison Burton in the 21. He's a lap down, running in the 20th position. Back up front, Kyle Busch. Three tenths over Truex. Truex running the top of the racetrack, going to create some momentum here. Looks like his car is firing off really well on this set of tires. Just 81 laps to go here in the Southern 500 as the heat being turned up for Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch up front running one and two separated by two car lengths. Let's we'll see what Kyle does down here in turn three and four. Rick with his run at top drives to the bottom of the racetrack slides up Truex to the bottom closes in not quite up to the quarter panel. Kyle drives away down the front straight away. Pressure still being put on by Truex. You know, Truex wants this win so badly, not in the playoffs. Finished fourth in the regular season points, but still did not transfer into the playoffs. I have a feeling he's going to be dangerous. Bottom of the screen. Year. Yep, bottom of the screen, William Byron. Cole Custer, all those guys racing around LaJoy. LaJoy one lap down. Yeah, those cars, Dale, pitted were caught by the yellow, so as wave around, they have new, newer tires, but they had to start all the way at the back of the field, behind the lap down cars and everything, to your point about the seven being a lap down. That's why we're seeing lead lap cars passing him. They started all the way back at the tail, taking the wave around. There's Tyler Reddick in the eight, trying to get by Bubba Wallace in the 45. Tyler moves up to sixth place with that pass. Little wiggle right there. He's going to try to drive away from Bubba in this 45. Behind Bubba's is a teammate. Ty Gibbs in the 23. Ty's not ran well all day long. Been around 20th position the whole race. But this, this caution that came out caught a lot of guys on pit road a lap down. Give him an opportunity to jump into the top 10. And remember, there he is. And remember the communication to Tyler Reddick about 45 minutes ago. Hey, it's a long race. Focus on what we're doing. Pay attention to what we're doing. There he is running in sixth place. That's what you have to do here. So many things happen at this racetrack. Isn't unusual to get weird cautions 
in the middle of sequences is not unusual. You just can never quit. Speaking of never quitting, Kyle Larson in that five, clearing the seven of LaJoy again, a lap down, but here comes the 31 of Haley. Haley's also a lap down. Harrison Burton right now, the first car, one lap down in 20th place. Larson up to 16, and Kyle Larson, remember the start of this race, anything but impressive for the five team. They were all the way down in 36, but were able to battle back. Now, Dave, they made it all the way up to 16. Getting that free pass was amazing, Rick. Restarted at that point in 22nd and really didn't make a lot of progress. And crew chief Cliff Daniels told him during this last caution, I know you're frustrated, but your lap times really aren't that bad. I think traffic, I think the dirty air is helping him or worsening his situation more than anything else. The car's not awful, but the mystery motor situation that brought him to pit road and lost him those three laps early, they're going to have to work on finding out what that was when they get back to the shop. We've had a few mysteries, right? The five had this motor issue. The one had this drive pin issue. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. The seven ran it or had a fuel pressure issue. As the lead is heating up, but just a lot of issues here in 500 miles at Darlington. Drex to the inside here of Kyle Busch. Drex flew around the top of three and four to really close this gap. Kyle's going to let him have it. Smart move by the 18, I think. You know, a lot of times you feel that pressure from behind. It makes you overdrive your car as the leader. You get out of sync, start making mistakes, start slipping tires. You can't slip tires here. It's going to hurt you on the long run, cost you a lot of positions. Truex back to the lead. <laughs> Yeah, you say slip tires. That is not just with the throttle. It's with the front tires, too. You can oversaturate the tires, try to turn them too much, abuse those tires, abuse the rear tires also. The least amount of scrub on that tire, the longer it's going to last. And as loud as these cars are, you could hear when the 19 of Martin Trucks Jr. passed the 18 of Kyle Busch, the crowd roared here at Darlington. Parker. All right, as Kyle Busch has led 145 laps in this race to Martin Truex Jr.'s 14. Back at the end of stage two, though, he knew Martin Truex was probably his biggest competition. Take a listen to his radio. Oh, whatever the 19's got. Holy moly. Yeah, he's uh, blasting the entry at turn one, not using much brake. He's waiting a little bit longer to pick up the gas. And then Kyle tried that when he later got the lead back where he went off into turn one. And he said, did you see that? When I tried to do what the 19 is doing, I almost knocked the wall down. The 19 really had something down in turn one that the 18 hasn't been able to find. They've been trying to find that long run pace in this 18. They just can't get it fixed up for him late in the run here. Still in striking distance as there are 71 laps to go in the Southern 500. Now it's Mark Trucks Jr. up front. NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on USA. This telecast presented by T-Mobile as we've come to 65 laps remaining in the first race of the playoffs. And it's Martin Trex Jr., a driver who just missed making the playoffs, but made the statement earlier today and this weekend, he will definitely be a spoiler. Want to get a few more updates on playoff drivers, and we'll start with Parker. Well, as we see, Kyle Busch has lost about a second and a half to his teammate there, Martin Truex Jr. We noted how he tried to mimic what Martin Truex Jr. was doing down to turn one. Now the team is instructing him what that 11 car behind him of Denny Hamlin is doing in turn one, telling him that he has this wider entry that's allowing him to carry a little bit more speed through the center. And Kyle and I talked about that very line earlier today. As you see him just a little higher there, and he said, when you do that, though, you got to be really smart about the center of the corner. And there, right there to turn two, you got to get it straight and turned. Otherwise, you'll never get it back down Dave. Denny Hamlin's balance is a lot better and just think where he was this week midweek as he looks to the low line here. He had had that back crash at Daytona and he was asked how he was feeling. He said the best way I could describe it is like I got beat up at a bar and somebody was kicking me in the ribs while I was on the ground. Well Rick you know what he bounced back from that been healing better every day and looks like Denny Hamlin is in position to race for the lead. Denny's trying to figure out how to get around this 18 car but 
Kyle's running the line, I believe, that Denny would like to be running. And you see when Denny gets close and he has to kind of go offline, start entering lower and doing things that he's not doing, can't really make the pace or the speed to close in on this 18. We talk about the Denny Hamlin line. Well, it's about entering high into one. Watch this 18. See the 18? That's the Denny Hamlin line. And watch him get in the throttle and drive away right here. Denny wants to swap with him. He wants to be like, you run this line, I'll run that line. Because that's the one, I mean, we, you know, Denny started doing this about five, six years ago. And I, I went up to him, I said, hey, man, can I talk about that on the broadcast? He's like, nope, I don't want nobody to know about it. And everybody's starting to pick up on that line in the one, running a little bit higher late on tires. You ask permission? Uh, you know, trying to be nice. I didn't want to just tell everybody the whole world about it. Uh, These two we, are we fighting. Still, we still did anyways. I was going to say. They're fighting for the second spot, and while they're doing it, Martin Trex Jr. has pulled out to a 1.6-second lead over Kyle Busch. Yeah, Kyle, this run is not, as far as not been very good on the back end of this run. Took off with good speed. Had to get back out of the gas there. Denny did. We're hearing his throttle. Now that they're catching the lap traffic, that might, you know, Denny, Denny in his mind thinks, man, okay, this might help me because it's going to make this 18 get offline. Make this 18 have to move, move around and do things he doesn't want to do, except for things like that. Corey getting sideways across the racetrack. Doesn't seem to slow Denny down too much. Yeah, Denny's really close the gap now, but he's going to have to get out of the gas. He slides up toward the wall. You cannot really follow the 18 in his tracks and expect to drive right up to his back bumper. It's just going to be too much dirty air, not enough grip, slick tires, wore out. Steve, I'm guessing we're looking at about 12 laps until these guys will try to break it up and maybe come back to pit road. Yeah, 12 or just a little bit more, maybe like 15, 16, 17 laps. I expect everybody to come in around lap 325, so. Uh, but th th that'd be a way for Denny Hamlin to jump the 18, right? Try to leapfrog him on the racetrack. If he pitted a lap before the 18 and they had the same length pit stop, the pressure tires should get him in front of the 18. Maybe he thinks he has car to go run the 19 down. Get a few more updates. We'll go to Kim. When that Kevin Harvick caution came out, Tyler Reddick was the free pass, so they brought it in, made a right rear shock adjustment to help free him up and a little wedge. It was a big swing, in fact. Seemed pretty good to start, but then Tyler just came on and said it's like a split switched again. The right front is just not doing anything I want. They also just radioed it to him and said turn four is where we're losing the most speed. So watch that there. He currently runs in the sixth position, Parker. Right for Christopher Bell running in ninth place right now. He scored the fourth most points through the stages of anyone in this race, but it's sort of stalled out in that ninth position. He said on the radio just recently, I don't really know. I feel balanced with the car. He's happy with it. And then the team said, well, we tried backing it up and letting it roll. You're using too much brake down into turn three. So they're trying to find some adjustments in that car to help him move forward, Marty. Parker on Monday in a team meeting, Joey Logano told his guys and his pit crew, we are the favorites to win the championship this year. Why? Well, they came into this race having earned more points than any team in the last five races. It's been a scrappy night for the 22 team. All that track condition he fought for earlier, they lost when that caution didn't work out for him. Sitting in 10th right now, Dave. Ryan Blaney is in 11th position, Marty, 13 seconds behind the leader, Martin Truex Jr., and with a car that is tight turning down off of the corner. Now, remember, they were one of the cars that waved around on the lap 276 caution, so his tires are about eight laps older than the leaders. Marty? William Byron sitting back there right now in the 13th position after leading 50 laps early on. He said it's just way too tight right now. They keep kind of encouraging him. Fight. You got to keep fighting. It's a long race. Still 55 to go here. He said the ride quality is not great. The last two stops have not been terrific for the 2014. They've asked William to turn the wheel a little bit more. They've been having problems getting that right front tire off of the car when he comes to pit road, Kim. After what was a miserable summer stretch for the 48 of Alex Bowman, they were just looking for what they call a decent, as you see Kyle Larson trying to make the pass right there on the 48 of Alex Bowman. They were looking for a decent, uneventful day is what they told me. They felt like they had a pretty good car, decent long run speed as you see that battle back and forth between Alex Bowman and Kyle Larson, Dave. And Larson gets the spot as they go through turns one and two here. 
This morning, crew chief Cliff Daniels told me that the word of the day was going to be survive, and I guess that's where they have played this so well. Again, three laps down earlier for a mysterious issue. Back on the lead lap, trying to make up some ground before the end of this race, Marty. Today, if you were a rookie driver, how would you describe the Southern 500? Austin Sendrick said this week, the biggest mental challenge of the season for him. He said the car very loose right now, trying to hang on right there in front of Ty Dillon, and he said it's looser than the last run. They asked him, hey, if you can hang on for about 10 more laps, that would help us out quite a bit. And Austin Dillon just now went down a lap again. They have struggled with the handling all night long in that three car after making his way into the playoffs last week with a win at Daytona. Never been able to get the tightness out of that race car. Austin Dillon a lap down in 19. Gap growing now between second and third. Kyle Busch has put about a second between himself and Denny Hamlin. And you look at the points as they run. When Chase Elliott started this race, he had a 35 point advantage over Austin Dillon. And now Chase Elliott down in the ninth position as we see Logano making the move on Cody Ware here. Let's listen into the 22 radio. You ready? I might have a loose left for it. No, sir. Your balance change. I'm a little free right now. Yeah, the weird vibration though. And you hate to hear that as a crew chief. You just encourage your driver. You're going to support whatever decision he has to make. Maybe run through a mental checklist to, if you think it could be something else other than a wheel. But Joey Logano, you know, very veteran behind the wheel, experienced race car driver. He's going to know what he's feeling. We'll have to see. We see a few cars starting to come down the pit road as we ride on board Joey Logano. One quick update. Daniel Suarez, he was running inside the top five before that pit cycle. Remember, he was speeding, so he couldn't take the wave around. Now he's outside the top 20. Uh, we showed him the points. He's right on that cut line, so a costly penalty on the 99, Marty. Austin Cindric hitting with 50 to go. Jeremy Bullen's making that call here. Remember, they kind of have a set advantage on a lot of the field. There are other teams, though, that are on their same tire plan so far. Cindric saying the car way too loose, as we mentioned a moment ago. Hoping to gain some spots, came to pit road in the 15th position. Here comes Logano. Gano was running up inside the top 10. Dave. Here's Ryan Blaney now making his stop with 49 laps to go. Will it be the last one? Hard to say here at Darlington. They'll have a set remaining in case they need it. Austin Dillon taking his next to last set of sticker tires here with 48 to go, Dave. Their car just not handling the way they want. Joey Logano made it to this point. Paul Wolf said, hey, if you can last it for a little bit longer after you put that vibration, that would really help us. So they got here with 48 laps to go. Otherwise, Logano saying the car just a little bit too tight, but not that bad. And to see that track condition back. For Kyle Larson, turns three and four were the best. Really good one and two as well. In a certain part of his run, he asked to get something they had back in the run before that. Little adjustment here, Marty. William Byron coming down pit road. We've talked about the troubles on the last couple of stops. They've asked Byron to turn the wheel a little bit more. Right front comes off clean that time. So it should be a quicker stop for the 24, but to the right pile, just not nearly as good as he would like it again. Gang Stahl told me pit stops are a big concern for them, and today they consistently lost stops for spots during pit stops. Not a lot, just one or two, but when your driver is asking for clean air, that is doing him no favors. Martin Truex Jr., as you see Tyler Reddick there finishing up his stop. Tight has been the problem all day long. Nothing they do for him seems to alleviate that issue. So Tyler Reddick getting four tires, Sunoco fuel, Parker. Kim, Kyle Busch will pit out of the second position. I think his team wanted to go a little bit further here, but was forced down pit road with so many of these cars hitting there and getting new tires, just lacking rear longevity for the 18 cars when he came on the radio most recently saying that's been their trouble all night, trying to get that rear end of the race car to stick throughout the long run. Do you see four tires so full fuel is away? Well, you see on the top right, the 18 on pit road. Here comes the 19 right here. So the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. I know some races have gotten away from them because of some pit calls. Well, James Small is, is, is staying aggressive, and I like it. First of the leaders to pit. That got him on pit road. He now has blended out in front of the 18. Now, just remember, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, I believe, is yet to come to pit road. So we've seen this before out of Hamlin. He's going to try to run longer and hope fresher tires towards the end are going to pay off or maybe catch a yellow. I don't hate this gamble for the 11. While he's doing it, there's only two cars on the lead lap. 
So he, you know, a yellow now would save. Now Truex is going to unlap himself. I was counting him as one of the two. Well, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, he is now. So now let's. Uh, why does this work? Well, so you know, if he runs say 15 more laps and gets a yellow, then he'll have fresh tires. But I. He's, uh, no, no, I think I thought he was pitting as well, Junior. You and I both, <laughs> yeah. we both stumbled over it together because I, I thought he was coming. But I just, how does this work? Because it just seems like to me, why would you want to take any type of gamble? You're sitting there in the top three, but how does, how would this, if this works out, what is he open to happen? Okay, well, first there's 43 laps to go, so he's he's trying to run say another 10 or 15 laps. Then if the caution comes out, he will pit. The other cars in the lead lap, like Truex had just unlapped himself, would come and get tires as well, but it sounds like they're going to come this time right now. I don't understand if you're only going to run a couple long why you would do it. It's like he's staying out. But with the, if the caution doesn't come out, he doesn't get any of his time back. Not, not it's your break, Bias. We're coming this time. Coming this time. Again, back to the 18. Well, why did they stay out? They lost a ton of track time. When, we, when, he, when he comes back on the track, he's going to be seconds behind these guys. He is. He'll have a little bit fresher tires, about four or five laps, but I'm not sure if he'll be able to make that time up. We'll have to just wait and see with 42 to go. This is a great view of how hard it is to get on this pit road all the way around the corner. Get it rolled up off of below the orange box. Did a nice job. Five red, five red. Damn. Denny Hamlin definitely questioned when everyone else was pitting. Why aren't we pitting? And Chris Gabehart, the crew chief, said, I did not want to pit. We'll find out in the end how this works out because we'll see it blend in. And just in case, race fans, you're wondering, no, two tires is not an option here. You definitely have to have four in Darlington. And before this pit cycle went through, the 11 was 2.3 seconds behind Martin Truex Jr. So now you're getting ready to see what Jr's talking about. There's the 19 going down to turn one. Here's the 11 on pit road. Uh, so, you know, the 11 is going to be, I don't know, 15, 17, 18 seconds behind the 19 car of Martin Truex Jr. Five lap fresher tires are not going to help this. I mean, look, you still no 11, still no 11. He's going to pop up here on the apron. Yeah, but that so, speed he's going to, the speed that go. the other guys had <laughs> when they had new tires on, now he's going to have it. He come off that road faster than he All had. Right. You can tell he's hot. Yeah. You can tell he's like, man, what are we doing? But 11 now is going to have better tires for the rest of the race. So that's got to be the deal. They've got to try to run this thing out, hope it goes green. And hopefully, as the race goes on, these better well, tires later will help him. That's or the opposite, good. Jeff. Right? What he wants is a caution right now. If he had a caution right now, then he closes right back up to those five lap older tires. That would be the absolute best thing. But that caution has not come out. Instead of instead of coming to pit road a lap earlier, trying to leapfrog into second, they stayed out longer and now they're tenth. Man, I just don't see how that's going to work out. 15 and a half seconds back from Martin Shrugs Jr., who's back up front. And this is Cody Ware in the 51, the 26-year-old slamming the wall, but the caution didn't come out. And we are back at Darlington where the leader, Martin Truex Jr., has just come on the radio to say he has lost power steam. He can't do anything. A huge, huge disappointment for what was one of the strongest cars here this evening. Martin Truex Jr. having serious problems. And you saw the 18 on the same straightaway as the 19. And the 19 is two seconds slower than the 18. So the 18 now is feeling great about it. Junior, back to your conversation about Denny Hamlin. You know, he tried to do something to pass the 19. Now the 19 is going to come back to him. This long run is going to be very interesting to watch. Look at how quickly the 18. Here the must have lost a yeah, up, up, Joe, oh, 310. So it sounds like. The engine's hot as well, so what the crew chief said, it's a belt. So he has no power steering. So maybe debris got up, kicked one of the belts off. They're not serpentine. 300 to 400 to 315 on the straightaway, 320. 320, so it's just That's overheating. It. Water's not circulating. The belts are off the front of this Toyota. I mean, at this point, I, I can't believe the engine's going to survive. You don't want to be behind him. And so the 18 is going to try to take the lead right here. Kyle Busch goes back to the point here in the Southern 500. And now the question is, does the night with it, with his teammate leading, they don't want to blow up and bring out a yellow. You just heard the crew chief. You have, I mean, 300 degrees. You have to come to pit road, fire out the pipes. He's just trying to get to the bottom. 
Uh, frustration for Truex continues. So frustrated he didn't make the playoffs. And now with a real shot to win the Southern 500, and it's over. And as Kyle Busch takes the lead, crosses the start-finish line, and we watch the rest of the top five cross the start-finish line. Let's look at the distance back to fifth place, Denny Hamlin, 6.8 seconds back. Does he have enough time? 30 laps to go. Fresher tires. Can he drive back to the front? He's Bring the race to Kyle Busch. He's six tenths of a second faster right now. The Do the math. Can he get there? Well, but the question is, if it's five laps, and, and that's going to... No, as it's he five keeps laps going better for the whole run. Five laps better, and he's so going to continue just a curve. to be Think better the whole the curve, way. Right, so you just get slower, 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 slower. But I am five laps better than you. So while it won't be a second, or you know, it might go from a second to eight tenths, six tenths, it's still better. You're going to have better tires the whole time. And with 30 to go, the math says Hamlin gets there, zero problem. But will traffic allow it to happen, or does Kyle Busch have more left in the tank, Parker? Well, Steve, remember the weakness on this 18 car. It's around lap 30 in a run that he really starts to lose the rear longevity and the rear grip of this race car, and it sort of falls off a cliff. A couple runs ago, he lost multiple tenths from lap to lap when he lost the rear grip in this 18 car like a flitch was flipped and it went super loose. So keep an eye on this 18. This could get really close, Dave. Hamlin has now made up more than half the deficit he had to leader Truex at the time since they went back after this pit stop. Chris Gabart, the crew chief, confidently came on. You're kicking butt. Go, go, go. Looking to hear the second place runner, Tyler Reddick. Three and a half seconds back from Kyle Busch. Kyle a little bit faster this last lap. Kyle had some traffic he was in that allowed Reddick to close up a little bit, but man, this is why you never give up. You run all night long. This race has caution, so caution, caution. Oh, caution's out. Caution has come out. Another twist, another plot twist in the Southern Cody Ware, after slamming the wall, he finally has come to a stop. So now tire count is becoming a real issue. 12 sets of tires to start this race. Oh, about three and a half hours ago when the sun was up. This is what makes this race, you know, we talk about how long it is. But now there's a group of cars that have run 340 laps at the toughest racetrack to do it. And all they've really done is put themselves in position to have this sprint to the finish. Let's see what happens to the 51. Oh, Back into the, the wall same. again. Oh my goodness. Wow. Another one. Wow. It's like a replay of the first one and that's broken the toe link. You can't run offline in turns two. Uh, you know, this newer asphalt, that upper groove that you used to run there, it's not there anymore. It's dirty, a lot of debris. Anytime you see the 19 car going behind the wall, it's just, I mean, I feel awful for Truex. What a year, right? When they have the great cars, the, the coin flip pit strategy goes wrong. You know, I haven't seen him do anything like egregious, right? Take tires, don't take tires. It's so tough when you're leading kind of all year long. And then here, I mean, a winning car, this thing looks so good. And then it overheats, loose power steering. Probably just a silly piece of debris knocks the, you know, knock the belts off. Let's listen into the second place runner, Tyler Reddick. Man, I think that was the, uh the best we've been all weekend, pal. We're gonna put you four tires on here and let you go after it, okay, help me? Four, I like it. Well, how about, that's, that's, well, I've heard a couple pep talks. That yeah. one was a little less direct. I liked earlier, though. He just basically get on there and he set the tone. Yeah. Guys, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this, forget about it. We're gonna, you know, it, it was a really to kind of take advantage of it. Refocus, you gotta refocus right. because we're right. still in this thing and there was a lot of laps to go. And now here's a situation where Tyler Reddick and even Kyle Busch, whoever, if you're in the playoffs, you win this race, you advance to the next round. That's a guarantee you're racing in the next round. Yeah, and you can say, oh, well, you know, they're both good at Bristol and they're both good at Kansas. Well, I'll give you a little hint. Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick are both good at Darlington and they're 36 and 33rd. Anything can happen in these playoffs. If you can assure an advancement, it's two weeks where you can start looking ahead. Now your simulator that you go to, now you're starting to work on the next round. You know, you just, your whole effort moves forward. Kansas doesn't really scare me, but I think for these drivers, they almost look at Bristol like they look at Talladega. It's one of those tracks where anything can happen. So a guy that come out of here with a win, not have to worry about the rest of the round, takes a lot of stress out of the team. Kansas terrifies me. You have to be right against the wall. You have to be on the bottom all over the place. That, that racetrack is widened out. Now Reddick loves that. Yeah. He's gonna be right against the wall. He's right at home, but there's some others that aren't as secure. And Eric Jones pulled off the upset. Dave. 
Denny Hamlin comes to pit road from fourth place. He told his team it took off just barely snug. So maybe a barely adjustment right here as they'll go for four tires and fuel. Time for the pit crew to shine, Kim. Tyler Reddick pitting from the second position. This should surprise nobody. He finished runner up in the spring, doing a great job despite a tight handling race car. It's going to be four tires and a splash of actually no fuel, Parker, for Kyle, the eight. Kyle Busch asked for a better landing in turn one. That's all he wanted. Four tires for him. This pit crew has been on it. Can he hold the lead once again, Marty? Joey Logano comes in seventh. Final set of sticker tires for that team, putting them on right now. He said it's borderline free, but I'm afraid to make a big adjustment on it. You see Kyle Busch win the race off pit road. Does that number one stall pay off for Logano? It does for one spot. Well, Kyle Busch, he won the race off pit road, but how about the 43 team? Eric Jones, that petty GMS vehicle gets to second off of pit road, gaining a spot over Tyler Reddick. Eric Jones, not a part of the playoffs, but still looking for a great run and a potential first win in 2022. Kim. And Martin Truex Jr. out of the race after having one of the dominant cars. Walk us through what the car was telling you and how you knew something was wrong. I lost power steering and started overheating real quick and losing power. So um, I don't know, kicks and belts off or something. But uh, thanks to all my guys and um, everybody at JGR, TRD, Johnny Bass Pro, everybody for supporting us all year. It's been uh, it's been tough, and uh, this is another tough night for sure. But uh, come back next week and fight again. How would you describe the emotion you're feeling right now? Just mad, <laughs> upset, angry. Um, we deserve better, and just this year, no matter what we do, it seems wrong. And we run good. At, when we run good, stuff goes wrong. When we run bad, nothing bad happens. And it's just one of those years where we can't get anything to go our way. So um, it's about the fifth time I should have won this race, and I only done it once. So pretty pissed off. Appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks. You saw the emotion, guys, uh, right there from Martin Trucks Jr. That's why the fans love him. Yeah. That's why I'm excited that he's coming back for another year. This is not the last year we wanted to see Martin Truex Jr. It, he, he said it great, right? When they have bad cars, they run every single lap, no issues. When they have great cars, things completely out of Martin Truex's control, and James Small control takes him out of a race. So uh, you could hear the emotion. It was a great interview by Kim, and, and I'm just thankful he's coming back next year. We're going to get to see him attack his chance in the playoffs again. And listen, don't rule him out of the next nine. Right. If he finally breaks through and wins one, he could go on a heck of a streak. Yeah, the frustration uh, just it was so poignant there in his voice. And once again, the 19 behind the wall. So out front, Kyle Busch. The last time Kyle Busch won here was 2008. That was his first year with Joe Gibbs Racing, and it was his seventh career win. Well, he has tallied 60 career wins, and so Kyle Busch is he having momentum at the right time. I mean, Adam's going to say, is there there's, smoke yes. coming out of the 18? It's coming out of the pipes. The 18 is blowing, blowing up. Oh my God. What is going on? It is a, unbelievable the number of playoff drivers that have had problems tonight. That's going to put Eric Jones at the start of this field. He won here in 2019. The fans are going crazy. They are either love or hate Kyle Busch as a fan. He's so, that don't like him or expressing their pleasure. Tomorrow. He's so polarizing, and right now you're hearing it out of the crowd here as they see the 18 uh, blowing uh, up. For your agent. Parker. The 18 team cannot believe it. Ben Bayshore just slammed the pit box down here. Obviously upset with such a dominant race car. And see this turn of events, guys. Mark Trucks Jr. A belt comes off after he's dominating out front. And speaking of dominating, Kyle Busch led 155 laps of this race, and now it looks like the engine will expire. As a week came on, you see he was leading now. He's just going to drop down the points. When we came on the air, guys, we talked about Darlington, the prestige, the and the challenge. And, you know, I think this is that last true throwback. But a lot of these races, a lot of these racetracks, it's as hard as you can run all day long. This track down here, too tough to tame. It's not giving up. It's not letting go. It has the grips on these race teams. I, you know, when this became the first race of the playoffs, I wasn't sure because I thought odd things could happen, but I actually have flipped. I think this is the best test of the best 16. You've made it to the playoffs, and now you are literally going to get punched in the mouth 
by the most difficult racetrack, and it's man and machine, right? The driver made mistakes, and this is a mechanical issue. It's the most difficult racetrack. Earlier, when we ran here in the year, we ran 400 miles. It's another 100 miles you had to put these cars through, and we're seeing some of them for failing that test tonight. Steve, remember when you and I were at the media tour this week? How many drivers told us, well, this first round will be pretty easy. Yeah. We'll just roll through this first round. But we're seeing right now that this is not a normal first round. This is not a normal year, by the way. Everything that could happen has been happening. While this is going on, Ryan Blaney is coming down pit road for some reason. I don't know why Blaney's on pit road, because everybody had pitted. I have to see. They were trying to make sure they had a wheel tight. This is the smart move. Let's just make sure it's tight. So there's now this turn 19 cars on the lead lap, roughly. This well, turn kind of, but the wave around will start behind him. Um, Jeff, I'm trying because the scoring has cycled. There's really 15, if that makes sense. You, you, you with me, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be yeah. 15 because the guys that are already on the lead lap are waving around. Right. He'll, he'll start in front of them. That was like a scoring test. You see. Kyle, but I mean, what a year. Contract, yeah. undecided. Where is he going next year? I've actually thought in the last few weeks, his comments in the media have become, uh, I don't know, not cheerful, but more pleasant, willing to talk about it. Uh, he was great this week at the media tour. And now here he is, blown engine, after having a dominant car, 155 laps led. And we're going to get the one to go here. And now controlling this race is the 43 car, the legendary Number 43 car here at the oldest racetrack, Darlington. 21 laps. We're going to be 20 laps to go when they get the green flag. Eric Jones is as good as anybody at this racetrack. With clean air, if he can get the lead into one, he'll be hard to beat. And I just wonder who's going to who's going to take this opportunity. Raddick, Hamlin, Belagano, four playoff drivers right there behind Eric Jones. You know who? You've got McDowell right there, Keselowski. Bubba Wallace. What a run for Bubba Wallace. Yeah. This would be an incredible, incredible night, though, for Petty GMS if they were to pull off the victory. Dave Allens and Eric Jones have, have really, you know, I, 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 we, you, Dale, you've done it in your career. Jeff, you've done it. Trying to kind of right the ship of a long term organization is one of the most difficult things, and Dave Allens and, and Eric Jones have continued to do it all year long. So I'm not so sure he's not going to have to have multiple good restarts. We've seen <laughs> into these races, especially this year, caution, caution, caution as the aggression level goes up. He's won here before in 2019. That's Eric Jones on the outside. On the inside, Tyler Reddick. For a playoff driver, it's an automatic berth into the next round. It's going to be a 20-lap shootout. Great launch for Eric, getting a good push from Denny Hamlin. Off into turn one, clear for the 43. Battle for second. Denny around the outside of the eight. Contact. Denny Hamlin's probably in the preferred spot right here. A little bit of contact again, getting into three. Reddick dives it in there, tries to overdrive it, take the line away. Not able to do it. Denny around the outside. Big momentum off before he's going to take the spot. Now, the four-time winner and Denny Hamlin going to try to track down Eric Jones. I said at the beginning of the show, my concern for this 11 was their penalties and their pit stops. Well, with 19 to go, penalties and pit stops might be completely in their rearview mirror. And now it's driver versus driver. And look at the speed of the 11. Big run by Denny Hamlin. He closed in there in the middle of three. What is he going to do down here in turn one? He enters a little bit higher. He's going to get some good speed to the center of the corner. Tyler Reddick still not out of this back there. Jones up the racetrack a little bit now, trying to take that line away from Denny. The gap, two and a half car lengths from the 43 back to the 11. You said it, Eric Jones is going to be a difficult pass 
He's been really good at this racetrack. He's a solid race car driver. He's helped bring this 43 car to the top. He's had a solid year all year. Now with a real shot to win the Southern 500. And the last time the 43 won here was September 4th, 1967, exactly 55 years ago. Eric Jones counting the laps down, under 16 to go. Reddick closing in there on second place. Gets a little tight off of turn one there, loses a little bit of time to Denny. The different lines being run. Reddick right down on the bottom of the racetrack. Parker. And guys, we see Eric Jones start to build a little bit of that lead, talking to this team earlier today and talking to Eric himself. They had so much confidence about being fast this racetrack. He said, I love this track. Dave Ellen said, we have a very fast race car. We can win this race, and we don't care that we're racing playoff contenders. We're here to win. That's what we're doing right now, being up front for the 43. And they made a massive adjustment at one point in this race, huge amounts of adjustments to try to get it back into the racetrack. And they've done a great job leading with 15 to go. Coming up on 14. 14 more laps for Eric Jones. Denny Hamlin, Tyler Reddick, Joey Logano, Christopher Bell, all in the top five. The lead growing just a little bit for Eric. Down the back straightaway hard into turn three. 16 winners already in 2022. Eric Jones would like to make that 17. Then he's moving around, trying different lines, trying all types of tricks to figure out to find some pace to be able to close the gap. We've seen multiple times tonight how a car can take off and be really fast and then lose some speed as the run goes on. We're not real sure about Eric Jones, how his car is on a long run. Not that many laps left, but Junior, we've seen it here before. You can all of a sudden have a great car, then the next thing you know you're driving a car you can barely hang on to. Look at the eyes in the visor of Denny Hamlin. I think the one thing that might trip up this 43 is lap traffic. With only 11 to go, they may not catch a lot of lap traffic, but it might be one or two cars that that's all it takes to slow that 43 down enough. You catch lap traffic in the wrong place here. Be tough. Not a great corner, not a great turn three and four for the 43. Then he closes up a little bit. Eric tries to settle back in, make good lap time here. Then he can't make a mistake himself. If he does, Reddick's right there to take advantage of it. See, Denny's opening his entry up, entering turn three. But that's also what Eric Jones is doing. Eric right against the wall there. Man, these guys aren't running the same line twice, and I think that's to try to throw the other guy off. You know, you never know where this guy in front of you is going to go, so you can't get that clean air if you can't make that guess properly. Looks like Denny's better in three and four. 43 pulls him a little bit down here, one and two. Eric Jones, twice a winner in the Cup Series. The most recent, 2019, here. See, didn't he get closer right there through that corner? But then down here in one and two, seems like Eric can put a, put a good corner together, stretches it back out a little bit right here, all the way through acceleration off of two. Down the back straightaway, that 43 brings that gap back to what it was the lap before. But down here in this corner, Good aerial coverage here. Shows you this 11 car on corner exit right here, back in the throttle, he closes right back in. Eric Jones has the weight of the 43 number on his shoulders, but he's been in this position before. One race is the Xfinity level, run one race is the cup level. This guy's capable. He's starting to catch lap cars now. That cost him a little bit down the back straightaway. He's going to get around Corey LaJoy into turn three. Now Denny has that same challenge. Denny dives deep into the corner. Look how quickly he clears the seven car. Yeah, LaJoy almost up into the wall as the 11 went by him. 
Denny knew he had to make the pass that way, though. He knew it was an opportunity to close the gap a little bit, and he did that. Very aggressive. Less than seven laps. Look at that 43 and one and two, though. So fast. So fast and smooth through that corner. Last time the 43 won was with Eric Almarola back in 2014. And Reddick is still right here. Impressive run here late in the race for Reddick just to keep pace with these two guys. The third car in line, the one with the least amount of downforce and arrow. They have really helped this eight car to make him competitive late. Jones, Hamlin, Reddick, Logano, Bell. Still, those, the top five. Coming to five to go, Rick. And is the gap getting larger? Looks like about six car lengths now, separating the 43 and the 11. Five laps to go from Darlington. This place is going to be electric if this 43 goes to victory lane. But this place, it's so easy to lose the opportunity, right? One little slip up here can you lose a second. And remember the job his pit crew did. They picked him up a spot on pit road. And then when the trouble happened to Kyle Busch, that put him in the lead. Yeah, Dave Ellens, great call from the pit box. Remember, this is a car that ran long. And that caution came out. It cycled him up inside the top five. And then Eric Jones has kept it there. All right, the 11th, you know, keeping the gap pretty good. Got a couple lap cars right here. They're going to encounter somewhere around the exit of turn four. So there's, the lap cars are side by side right here in front of the leaders down the front straightaway. B.J. McLeod, that red car, he'll move completely out of the way. Be very respectful. See that right there? He just got completely out. Now this is the problem. You got to time this right, and he's done it. He's timed it right. Now he'll make a clear pass down the back straightaway. Nice job by Eric Jones. And he's he slowed in. the center up to make sure he did not catch the 14 on corner exit. Denny within three car links here. Here comes the 11. Coming up on two laps to go. That was smart driving by Eric Jones, though. It allowed Denny to gain a little bit, but not as much as if he would have caught him on the exit of turn two. Now the gap under three car lengths, separating the 11 and the 43. Here comes Denny Hamlin. Good corner for Denny right there. He kept it close. He's closing in on the back bumper. We've seen him dive into three real deep. Can he get to the back bumper, upset the back of this 43? Got within a car length. You can see the strength right there of Eric Jones. He's really good on corner Mark exit. Here. Denny Hamlin drives deep in the corner. Great corner by that 43 of Eric Jones. Great corner. He's got lap traffic in front of him. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Can Hamlin do it? Just a half a lap remaining. The lap traffic's getting way out of the way here. Eric Jones pulls away on the back straightaway. Denny deep into turn three. What will he try to do? Denny Hamlin up to the back bumper. But the 43 of Eric Jones comes out of turn number four. Jones is going to win the Southern 500. That is the 200th win for the 43. What an underdog that win. That is awesome. Good job, Eric Jones. Great job, pit crew. Love you guys. What an underdog win. Dave Ellens comes on board this year, winning championship crew chief in the Xfinity Series. Big boost for this team. Eric Jones, a guy that was let go by Gibbs. A lot of guys, a lot of people didn't believe in him. He built, put that on his back. And he takes Richard Petty back to victory lane. What an incredible night. 55 years to the day. There's Dave Ellens, crew chief for the 43. You want to drink some beer tonight?
what a night it has been for Eric Jones and the 43 team. Steve, I used the word endurance when we started this show. Attrition. The 19 looked to be the strongest car with 100 laps to go. A power steering issue, a belt issue, takes him out. The 18 blows an engine. And who's in the right place? Eric Jones of the 43 to grab his third career Cup Series win. Level, right? Eric has. Dave Allen had not. Came over from Junior Motorsports. Look at the smiles, the hugs. Let's go down to Marty. In NASCAR's oldest and toughest race, the Southern 500, Eric Jones does it a second time, puts Petty GMS. And the 43 Darlington fans in victory lane. How about that? Of all places to do it, Eric, you put the 43 in victory lane at Darlington. What does that mean to you to put Richard Petty in victory lane tonight? I get a hat. <laughs> he told me I get a hat if I win. But, uh, man, Richard hasn't been to uh, victory lane at Darlington probably since he last won here. So. Just awesome, just so proud of these guys. Petty GMS, the Focus Packer crew. Uh, man, we've been so close here and there all year. And I didn't think today was going to be the day. You know, it was going to be a tough one to win, I knew, but no better fitting place, man. I love this track, I love this race. And on that trophy twice, man, I was pumped to be on it once, but have it on there twice, pretty cool. I got to ask you about the final few laps. How in the world did you hold off to any Hamlin? And how much were you driving out of the rearview mirror or the windshield? Well, Man, I was focused forward. Honestly, that's the calmest, the calmest I've been in the race car going for a win ever, really. I think back to the last time winning here and was driving my guts out, my nerves were pounding, my stomach was hurting, and today it was just, you know, business as usual. And uh, just feel good about this track and knew Denny would run me clean and knew it was going to be tough for him to pass. You know, it was tough to pass all day and we got a good restart start there, but uh, man, so proud of everybody. Just. <laughs> what a dream come true. That's all you can say. What sort of redemption is this for you, Eric? Let go by Joe Gibbs Racing. These guys took a chance on you. They put you in the 43. Now you've put them in victory lane. Well, I mean, uh, I, I never lost any belief in myself through any of it. I knew I could still do it, I, and I just knew we needed to grow the program to do it, and, and we have. We, we've, we've brought on a lot of great people in the last year. Dave Ellen's called a great race today. His, his first cup win, that's pretty cool for him. So. Uh, I'm excited, man. We've been talking about this day a long time, and it is redemption in a lot of ways. Very fitting that it's here at this race again. You know, I felt like this was the race that saved my job the first time around, and uh, coming back here with this win, I guess it puts you back on the map. You seem almost like you're in disbelief yourself. Well, <laughs> it's had a lot of good stuff go our way. You know, we got the lead there with the 18 losing a motor, and I'm like, man, we got a good shot if we can just get clear. and. You know, we had a good car. We just weren't quite with the pace of some of those guys up front. And I knew we took the lead. I'm like, man, 20 laps. I can just run hard. And those last two, I was I was losing the balance a lot. I'd been running really hard, but uh, it was it was just enough. So I'm uh, just really proud. How about that, Darlington fans? Eric Jones, a two-time winner of the Southern 500, puts Richard Petty, Maury Gallagher in their first year as Petty GMS in victory lane in the Southern 500. Eric Jones is going to be making his way to the Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane. We mentioned it was back in September 4th, 1967. You saw right there Lee Petty, Richard Petty, and the celebration that took place. But 55 years to the day since Richard Petty had the 43 in Victory Lane here at Darlington. Well, and Eric mentioned it all in his interview, right? It was a great call to run a little long, and they caught a yellow. Great driving from the man behind the wheel. Great patience of building this 43 program. 
know, a lot of things had to go right. They always do. No one wins this race without things going your way. Uh, and the 43, most importantly, when things went their way, they absolutely took advantage of it. And we heard Eric mention it. When the 18 blew the engine, he just knew he had to stay up front. Well, let's get the other side of that story. Uh, while the race was just coming to an end, Kyle Busch came out of his hauler, and Kim caught up with him. Here was that interview. Kyle Busch leads 155 laps before your early exit. What happened? Uh, engine broke. Uh, just unfortunate circumstances for us tonight. The guys did a great job, brought a really fast M&M's Toyota Camry. Just uh, real proud of the effort and all the stuff that, uh, you know, the guys have, have done and gone through with um, just all the news and everything, you know, going on through the year. They've They've dug in, they've never given up, and they, they continue. So just had a great car, and um, don't come out with anything to show for it. That's that's what I really, really hate about it. You mentioned the team digging in with this new cycle you're going through. What about you? How are you feeling right now? <laughs> I don't know. Tomorrow, the sun, will, the sun will come up tomorrow. Kyle Busch obviously frustrated with this evening's result. I'll be honest with you, man. That, that's, a, that's a good sign, I think, to see that kind of Composure from Kyle after a tough, disappointing end. Um, I didn't really know what to expect from Kyle going into the playoffs, what kind of team they could be. They were out here tonight really strong, maybe the best car in several points of the race between him and Truex. Uh, but still a pretty positive attitude after that. And, this, you know, it gives me some confidence in that 18 team going forward. Yeah, I think Kyle for the last two or three weeks, he's been just very matter of fact. He's, he's been very... Uh, workman like, hey, I'm going to go get my job done in very adverse conditions, uh, trying to figure out what he's got going on for next year. But I'm going to tell you something, making that left into this victory lane for this race is a huge deal. This is the Southern 500. And to be a Southern 500 winner is an honor, and it was well earned tonight. Yeah, we talk about crown jewels and you've got the Daytona 500, you've got the World 600, you've got the Southern 500 at the oldest raceway that NASCAR runs on. Been racing here since 1950. And now, Eric Jones joins 16 others, 17 different winners this season. That Ties the most through 27 races. What a race it's been. Attrition. We saw dominant performances out of the Toyotas until mechanical issues ended their night. In the end, it was Eric Jones at Petty GMS that celebrate in victory lane. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.